Welcome to Friday's Lock-In. I'm Barry Chandler. You're all very welcome to this week's celebration of Irish whiskey with a bit of a twist this week because we are coming to you uh, at least partially live from Japan, which is uh, a new departure for us and I'm excited for the evening we have ahead. I don't know about you, but uh, some of the best connections and friends I've made have been through the world of Irish whiskey. It's allowed me to meet very interesting people from different parts of the world. It's allowed me to build friendships, connections. It's connected me closer back to Ireland uh, and to, to where I, I come from, uh, even though I'm living 5,000 miles away. And uh, I think maybe a lot of you feel the same. There's a great community around Irish whiskey, and that doesn't mean just around the distilleries or the brands or the places where Irish whiskey is made, but rather where Irish whiskey eventually ends up. Uh, and uh, so for that, I'm very grateful. Uh, and I'm very grateful for all of the people that have come into my life through Irish Whiskey. So tonight we're celebrating Irish Whiskey in Japan. We are going to meet some of the evangelists for Irish Whiskey, those who are flying the flag for Ireland's favourite drink uh, in Japan. We're going to hear some great traditional Irish music from uh, a J Japanese traditional Irish music band. And we're going to learn a little bit about the culture in Japan and understand how they perhaps perceive Ireland and Irish whiskey, and we're going to get a better sense of uh, the relationship between Ireland and Japan. And uh, so it's a great night ahead. I'm looking forward to it. Uh, this is the first time we've done something uh, so remote or so. Uh, never have my guests been so far away, I would say, uh, as, as they are tonight. So it's going to be a good night ahead. So let me know where you are uh, in the world. Uh, let me know what you're drinking. Let me know what's in your glass. Uh, there's always a great group that joins here every Friday night. Peter is joining us from Dublin with a dram of red breast 12 cast strength. Good man, Peter, Peter regular. Morning drinking in Japan. That's right, Ronan. Uh, 8 a.m. in Japan, would you believe? So our guests, you know, I think I have it early when I do the lock-in. It's only four o'clock in the afternoon when I go live compared to midnight in Ireland. Uh, it's 8 a.m. Saturday morning in Japan. So uh, extra kudos to our guests tonight for joining so early and uh, spending their breakfast with us and a glass of whiskey. Uh, fair play to them. Cheers uh, from Montreal, says Paul, enjoying a dram of Red Breast Lestau. Good man. Mark Ashley, hi to you. Jeff in Indianapolis, starting off with a bit of Teeling Pot still. Good man, Jeff. Robert Kosiba is joining us. Evening, Robert. Sipping on Red Breast 12 in New Jersey is Kieran Quinn, our regular guest and uh, a regular guest indeed, yeah, and, uh, and uh, always a great supporter. Chad is joining us from Bismarck in North Dakota, sipping on some slain. Good man, Chad. You're very welcome. Sarah Kennedy, good midnight indeed. Good to see you, Sarah. Previous guest on the show from McConnell's Irish Whiskey. Great to see you. Thanks for joining us. And uh, JJ is up in Toronto, in Canada, having a drop of the Tier Connell. A good drop indeed. John is drinking Powers John's Lane in New Jersey. And we already have some uh, Japanese guests in the house. Tatsuya, good morning from Japan. Hello to you, Tatsuya, and uh, welcome. Uh, also a regular uh, a regular uh, member of our audience and supporter of the lock-in. Karen says, hi, Barry. Plain old Jameson for me in Dublin. There's nothing plain about it. We'll be starting our night off with Jameson tonight. Uh, it is uh, consumed quite uh, in, in great quantities in Japan, as it is around the world. We'll be drinking this, uh, not neat, but in a different way, the way they consume it most commonly in Japan. Uh, and we'll open that in a second. So enjoy your Jameson, nothing plain about it. Uh, Dearman is drinking Red Breastless Stow in New Jersey. Great stuff. Brian Redden, Thomas Carroll, Jacob Hicks, Scott Rogers, great to see you all. And Ed Powers with a drop of blue spot. Good man, Ed, in the 614 in Columbus, Ohio. We should get into it. Uh, we've got a great night ahead of sipping, of stories, of song, perhaps, a bit of music. And um, I'm excited to learn myself tonight and uh, really excited to uh, connect with these uh, fine folks. Uh, today, uh, I got my second vaccine, uh, which I'm excited about. And uh, what's uh, it, 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 it seems to be... Um, it's quite a divided world we're in at the moment in terms of who has access to vaccines, who doesn't, uh, where coronavirus is striking particularly heavily uh, and where it's perhaps declining. Uh, and uh, it, it sometimes feels like uh, we're so far apart from countries and cities and, and communities that are that are more affected or less affected. And it feels like the world can sometimes feel quite distant and quite disconnected. And so tonight we're connecting across the water, across the ocean, across continents with uh, over something that we all have in common, which is a love for Irish whiskey. And so uh, 
we celebrate those who are in good health and we wish those who are not in good health uh, speedy recoveries uh, and we raise a glass to you wherever you are tonight uh, and we hope you enjoy yourselves and uh, sit back and relax and, and, and sip on a bit of whiskey uh, and enjoy the crack tonight. So I'm going to bring in our first guest. He, he will serve as co-host tonight, uh, our, our Japanese liaison, and that is Mr. Rob Hennessy, who's joining us all the way from Fukui City in Japan. Rob, welcome. Ohio gozaimasu, Barry. How are you doing? I'm doing great. I'm doing great. You, um, Rob, you first came uh, across our radar here on the lock-in because every time we'd, we'd, we'd have a lock-in on a Friday night, there'd be a, a, a fairly consistent hello comment from yourself uh, with a cup of coffee at 8 o'clock in the morning in Japan, uh, tuning in, despite the fact that you didn't have a whiskey in your glass, you'd still tune in for the crack anyway. Yeah, um, well, I plan to make up for it this morning with you because I've been following you along for ages and uh, enjoyed the show, uh, you know, since the podcasts. And uh, But yeah, usually out here now, it's eight o'clock in the morning, so I wouldn't be uh, tucking into whiskey generally at this hour. Rob, what... Let's start, like, you're, you're sitting in an unusual location before we get to that, because this, this is a whole uh, hour of its own of just discussion of where you're sitting, because it's fascinating where you are right now. But before we get to that, we're going to keep everybody on the edge of their seat guessing where you are and what you're sitting in. But um, <laughs> how did you end up in Japan? What brought you to Japan and how long have you been there? Um, well, I've been here for 10 years now. And um, what brought me out was, um, I guess... Uh, Ireland, you know, kind of the economy kind of slowed up, uh, you know, 12 years ago. And uh, I had uh, previously worked in New Zealand with a bunch of Japanese people on a, on a vineyard. And uh, I thought they were gas and we got on well. And uh, I thought uh, the timing was right with Ireland being slow. And uh, I decided to come out this way. And uh, I've been here ever since. Now, I didn't plan on 10 years. I planned on a year. But uh, it's been that good, you know. You couldn't find the airport, huh? Well, I'm fairly rural here. There's not many airports around. Um, why did you stay? What When you say things were good, uh, you enjoyed yourself uh, in Japan, what's the attraction? What's the reason for staying in Japan? Um... Staff you really well. Uh, it's a very safe country. Nope, we might be losing Rob's connection there. Let me see. Rob, if um, if you can hear me, then anyway, you might need to reconnect there. Your Wi-Fi might be a bit spotty. We'll give Rob a second there, see if he can come through all right. Here he goes, reconnecting. There Sorry. you are. Sorry, Barry, you there? Yep, perfect. We have you back. Right. We saved you. Bad, bad start, bad start. Um, yeah, so um, people look after you well. It's a safe place. Uh, it's got a bit of everything, you know. There's great ski in one side and beautiful beaches and... Uh, fantastic big cities and uh, so much going on all the time. Like, uh, it's just a, a great spot, you know. Was Japan uh, welcoming of an Irishman arriving on its shores? Very much so. I mean, where I am here now in this county, there's only five Irish. Um, but between us, we have our own Paddy's Day in Everton. So they're open <laughs> to uh, whatever we have on offer. <laughs> and we have whiskey on offer. That that should be good enough. <laughs> we have whiskey and, you know, we're good at things that they're maybe not so uh, good at, you know. Uh, you know, everything's on time and organized and set up here. Um, but we can bring a different kind of an edge to, to um, different parts of life, maybe that they're not so uh, proficient at. You, you found yourself in a part of Japan with five five Irish people. Um, you decided it was time maybe to introduce the locals to a drop of Irish whiskey. Um, was was Irish whiskey something that you had a grow a bit of a love for in Ireland or Australia, or was it something that while you were in Japan, you turned your attention to it? Um, 
what turned me on to the Irish whiskey thing was um, back to the Paddy's Day idea. Um, I was setting up the Paddy's Day here in 2017 and I went looking for um, some sponsorship. So um, I got in touch with Teeling in Dublin there because um, I happened to go to school with uh, one of the Teeling brothers. And I told them what I was at and they were uh, forthcoming with a bit of sponsorship. And uh, since then, I've really kind of tuned into what's going on and uh, been enjoying the buzz around Irish whiskey and doing my best to promote it at this site. So here's what we should do. We should get a drop of whiskey in our bellies while we talk about this wonderful location you're broadcasting from. So when we were talking during the week, we talked about, or a couple of weeks ago now, we were trying to figure out what whiskies to have. And you talked about the wide availability of Jameson, but you said it's not consumed the way we might normally sip on a whiskey in Ireland. There's a different approach to drinking whiskey typically in Japan. Will you will you tell us how Jameson is consumed and we'll, we'll pour one that way? Okay. Um, well, yeah, I picked Jameson because um, it has availability here. You know, you won't see a big lineup of Irish whiskies when you go to the supermarket or the off license here but you will generally see a, a bottle of jameson so uh in japan uh if you go to the izakaya or your local kind of restaurant slash pub um, it'll be all about the highball now i think originally highball was a type of glass if i'm not wrong but um, was, yeah. in japan a highball uh, is one thing and one thing only it's a whiskey and soda okay so um, wherever you go, you'll get a highball. Often they'll be on draft or whatever. Now you wouldn't have draft Jameson highball, but you'd have a draft Jameson highball. So always soda, never, never anything else, never ginger or coke or no. No, a highball is a highball in Japan, and it's uh, sparkling water and a whiskey. It could be a Japanese whiskey. It could be an American uh, whatever, but uh, Jameson goes sweet with it. Uh, so a good highball berry in Japan would be one part whiskey to three parts soda. Okay. Ish. Ish. Would you go a bit Ish. heavier on the, on the hand? Would the Irish hand be a little bit heavier on the, uh, the one part, maybe making it two parts? It depends how late in the morning it is. So, uh, uh, can of soda. Right. And you end up with something about the strength of a glass of wine. Right. So, uh, it still has a bit of color to it and a bit of bite to it, but uh, it's something you could have with uh, food. Which I think oh, yeah. is why the highball had such success out here. I have only a medium it, glass. It, uh, would, would this be a medium ball as opposed to a highball? Will I get away with it? That would be uh, that would be a mini ball, Barry. A mini ball. All right. This would be a, a highball. <laughs> <laughs> Slancha. Cheers, indeed. Slancha. I mean, there's no denying that's a refreshing drink, like an, a, an easy way to get the to get the Jameson, get the whiskey into you. So would all whiskies be, irrespective of whether Irish, Scotch, Japanese, are they mostly consumed in highball fashion? Um, at the moment, I'd say most uh, whiskies are sold through highballs. Now, mm. of course, there's still kind of um, more high-end bars, whiskey-specific bars, where you'd get neat, whatever you like. But um, the average punter is going for a highball. Okay. And that allows you to have have a drink with your food. It allows you to presumably uh, go longer uh, during the day, uh, whether you're uh, hopping from bar to bar or uh, working through your work day. It's a yeah. It's easier than having the straight whiskey. Yeah, definitely. I mean, nobody's really sitting down to a straight whiskey and uh, you know a plate of food. Out here, uh, it's all about the highball, and it's the it's really the choice of the salary man these days. They're all after yeah. the highball. So there's a we we might get lost sometimes in our own pompousness of whiskey when we we're sipping away on our on our nice whiskies, and we think we're great with our little neat whiskies. When we forget that 
95%, probably more, 98% of the Irish whiskey in the world is consumed either in shot format or in, as a mixer, like, mixed with, with, a, with, a, with a mixer in highball fashion or in a cocktail. Um, and it's easy to forget that that's how the world is falling in love with Irish whiskey as we focus on our neat whiskies. There's something very refreshing about whiskey and yep. sodas, whiskey and gingers. Like. Definitely. It's a good one, especially out here. You know, the weather gets very hot and humid. So um, uh, a big glass of ice uh, with that mix in it uh, goes down a treat on a summer's day. There you go. There you go. I'm not against it. I'm not against it. Um, so you're sitting in what uh, some viewers have uh, thought is a horse box. Um, are you in a horse box, Rob? Or what are you doing? Well, there's not many horses out here uh, where I am. So I couldn't get a horse box. Um, what I got was a mini version of what's like a high ace van kind of a thing. So um, <laughs> it's 660 cc's of raw power uh, that uh, has been converted into an Irish whiskey bar. Here it is. Here it is. It's magic. Yeah, sure. It's um, maybe one of a kind. Uh, I know you've had a mobile uh, pub on before with people in the back, but in the back of, of this thing, uh, there's just about room for myself. So, so do you call this a mobile Irish pub, or do you call it um, um, whiskey on wheels, or what? What would you? What would this be classed as? Um. I called it a bar, so um, we just about um, have a counter out out the side, you know. So um, I thought a pub would be more kind of inside, uh, cozy kind of thing that you get into. So we called it uh, Irish Bar Shelburne. Irish Bar Shelburne. Mm. And what was the goal when you fitted out the high ace van with whiskey as the uh, the most important passenger? What was your the end goal with it? Um, I'd spend time going around uh, festivals and events and enjoying myself generally. So I thought, uh, why not bring a bit of Irish culture while I'm there and, uh, you know, uh, fly the flag and meet the people and uh, perhaps make a few quid on the way. So what do you do with the with it? Um, I'm fascinated. Like, do you do you get up in the morning, have your coffee, have your breakfast, and say, right, I'm off to drive the pub around Japan. Um, <laughs> what's the what's the format like? Yeah, um, you know, we get booked into various festivals and events and a few kind of corporate uh, gigs. Uh, but the Japanese be very organised, so you'd be sending emails, you know, six weeks before an event as to where you're going to park up and uh, in what order and what time the setup is. So um, nothing happens by chance out here, but. Uh, we'd be kept busy enough. Most weekends there'd be an event uh, that we'd uh, drive to and uh, spend the day or the weekend. And uh, generally the Japanese roll up and they're mad keen to try a, a bit of Irish whiskey because a lot of the brands are very new to them. And are you serving Are you serving food as well? Or is it just because I see lovely pictures of sandwiches there now and chips and all kinds yeah. of things. Uh, I'll tell you, we wanted to serve food, um, but those pictures are from our um, other people in neighboring food vans at the events who generally tag up through Instagram to support each other. So um, we wanted to do food, but because this is such a small car, we're limited to only doing two items. Okay. So those two items would be whiskey and beer. <laughs> what more do you need? Yeah. Bit of ice, maybe. Bit of water. Well, there you go. It works. Soda water. And what what what's it like to get licensing for something like that? I mean, if I was to buy a van here now in California and uh, carve a window out of the side of it and start turfing Irish whiskey out of the side of it, I'd be in front of a judge in the morning. Um, what's it like in Japan? Yeah, licensing is um, much more lax here. Um, you have to follow the rules, but the the rule like i said with the two items it could be that i'm selling uh, fish and chips once i stick to the two items i'm i'm right. safe and the licensing is relatively cheap so 
uh, there's no big sting like there would be at home in terms of a big expensive license. So you go out and you buy the whiskey and then you can sell it, you can charge whatever you want as long as you're, um, you're licensed for two items. Um, even if one of those was an atom bomb and the other was a, a keg of Guinness, it doesn't matter. You've got two items, you're free to sell whatever you want. Two items, uh, off you go. There's a, there's checks, of course. You know, you have to have two sinks and you have to have a, a fridge and a nice box and, uh, you know, clean surfaces and whatnot. But there's um, there's a bit of leeway and a bit of grey area there that you can, uh, can operate in. Dave in California says, we can do it, Barry. He's mad keen to, to already jump on this uh, literally bandwagon uh, and do it. Um, Steve says, uh, a Transit XL or Sprinter or a Ram Charger would do it. Maybe we'll get a Stories and Sips van going around uh, going around the US. <laughs> Hawking get whiskey. it going. World tour, buddy. You could do it. Um, you, you, so you um, when did you start the van? Was it 2017, was it, when you, you first kicked uh, it off? No, the van was about maybe two years ago. And before that, we had a tent. Okay. So, uh, like one of those kind of four post tents, and um, that was how we got it going. We built a bit of a counter, and um, we had the same menu, but the tent license was the first one we got, and then it's a separate license for the vet. Okay. Okay. Mm. <laughs> What's the reaction been like amongst locals? If there's only five Irish people, I'd imagine the marketing of Irish whiskey is not very uh, prevalent, or, or I'm sure it doesn't. Um, <clears throat> doesn't penetrate as, as much as other marketing might. Uh, what's been the reception to Irish whiskey out of the back of a van? Yeah, well, where I am here, it's, it's fairly conservative, you know, be fairly rural kind of place. Uh, be like Cork or something. Ah, and, go on, uh, yeah. the, the people, <laughs> the people uh, generally, they'll kind of walk past a couple of times and it could be at different events they'll pass you and you'll see them giving you the, the side eye kind of and then after a couple of passes, they'll stop and they'll try because Japan is very keen on trends and anything new, such as a new brand or a new whiskey or whatever, they'll be only dying to try it. Right. So um, getting out there and uh, promoting the new brands is a winner. Do you trade in English or in Japanese then when you're working out of the back of the van? Um. I guess Japanese, really, because the majority here wouldn't um, have a great grasp of kind of conversational English. Uh, they would all have studied English in school and uh, maybe have the basic grammar set up, uh, but they would study English as a subject. So it would be for passing the test as opposed to using it uh, day on okay. day to day. Would there be more of a universal language in just kind of waving a bottle out the back? Would that not suffice for the most part yeah they go for that but uh to be honest you don't have to encourage them too much because japanese are very keen on uh you know having a drink and uh having a laugh and um something new like i was saying did you so presumably you learned japanese and you um uh, acclimatized to be able to not just survive in japan but to do business in japan you, you, how long did it take you to pick up the language yeah, I think uh, the first two years were a hard grind because, um, you know, you're overwhelmed by the cultural aspects and then you yeah. need to get some kind of grasp on the language, which has, you know, layers of complexity that you could get into. But uh, you really, you just want to get a bit of conversational Japanese going so you can enjoy yourself on a night out with local people. But then um, it took me a good two years of lessons and study to get any kind of uh, conversational Japanese going, but uh, got the is basic. It difficult, um, is it a difficult language to pick up? It, it, it doesn't look easy anyway. Um, no, I mean, it doesn't look easy. The, the written uh, elements are, are fierce, tricky, and there's, you know, there's 5,000 of these kanji characters that you see mm. as kind of squiggles. So um, just focusing on the conversational bit kind of was enough for me. How do you choose the whiskies then that you'll push out of the back of the van? Um, is it based on availability? Is it based on what you can get hold of locally? Is it, are you 
are you buying things, flying them in from overseas, from Ireland even, to, to, to sell them? Um, generally, it's available, stuff that's available online. And, um, you know, we have Amazon Japan here, which is next day delivery. And you'll <laughs> see big brands there, such as, you know, Jameson Tullamore, Bushmills, uh, some new brands showing up here that are available, um, Clonakilty and uh, Hyde and um, a few others kind of uh, showing up. Um, but generally we sell what's available here as opposed to kind of importing special bottles because at the end of the day, we're out the back of a van. I'm not sure that the ultra super premium goes so well out the back of a high ace. So you wouldn't be shifting like red breast dream cask, 32 year old out of the back of the, the van on an average Tuesday. Not on an average Tuesday, but, um, you know, maybe Thursday. in the future, who knows? Richard has a question and I think I know the answer from looking over your shoulder. Are there any special releases to Japan that you can't get anywhere else? I see a light blue bottle over your left shoulder from Bushmills there. Yeah, I mean, this Bushmills was a distillery exclusive, I think, in Ireland. Is that right? Is that the one that was distillery exclusive or is that the one that was released for the Japanese market that you've got? Uh, I don't know. It's the same blue. It's 12 year old single malt. Um, which I picked up here in a local uh, off license. So, mm. uh, yeah, perhaps there's Japan exclusives. I'm not so uh, up to date on that. Richard might know more about that one. Um, what's the fanciest bottle in the van? Thomas wants to know. Um, nothing too fancy, you know. Uh, we try to keep up to speed, uh, you know, uh, dealing pot still. Um, yep. I think it's fancy, what with it being uh, the first pot still out of Dublin for a long time. And, um, you know, we'll go up to Redbreast 12 and uh, keeping it relatively standard, but um, it has to be at a price point here as well because we're, we're at markets and, um, you know, local events. So I, I don't think you can really sell... Uh, uh, a 20 euro whiskey out the back of a high ace. <laughs> Can you? <laughs> I don't know. Depends, dep depends how thirsty people are. I suppose you could sell them anything. Um, you have a good yeah. selection there from, from peated, peated malts to, to uh, single malts, pot stills. You've got a good selection there. Um, Tetsuya yeah. says that that Bushmills is an Asia market exclusive, um, which is, uh, which is great to see. So you, you've got an exclusive there. So uh, people should be chasing yeah. your van down the street to get hold of you uh, for a sip of yeah. the Asia market exclusive. Yeah. Um, no. Is that is that Irishman's cask strength, uh, Jason wants to know, lying on its side, having an old schnooze behind you? Oh, yeah. Yeah. That was a gift uh, from the Irish ambassador out here. So uh, I Good ended company. up drinking that one myself. Uh, I use it as a money box now. I thought the van was so small you couldn't store all the whiskey standing up. You had to lie it down. <laughs> <laughs> well, you can't drive it like this, but uh, I set it up. Um, there's so much more to talk about, but we have some other great guests that we're going to bring in as well. Um, and I think we're going to uh, give a, a quick couple of minute uh, heads up there to our musical guest. Uh, Rob, could you uh, give us an introduction uh, and kind of background to this, our musical guest that we're going to bring on tonight? Because you were very kind to connect them with us and the lock-in. Yeah, so... Um, I'm in Fukui here, uh, which is East Coast uh, Japan Sea, and this next group of uh, people are in Kobe. Um, people might know Kobe from Kobe beef and uh, stuff like that. It's about, um, I guess it's 200 and odd kilometers down the road. So the group are called Kilbegans, which your, your viewers might know from um, other famous whiskey brands, and uh, they're a three-piece, all-Japanese, um, Irish instrumental group, and uh, they've joined me here in Fukui for our Paddy's Day, and we're well-received, so no doubt uh, they'll go down a storm there. Brilliant, fantastic. So uh, I'll bring in Kilbegans to join us. Kilbegans, you're you're Hello. very welcome to, to our lock-in. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. I know it's... In Good Japan. morning, indeed. Yeah, it's 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 very early in the morning. Do you often do you often play this early in the morning, or is this the first time no. we got you up so early? 
first time. <laughs> first time. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> How, um, why do you play Irish music? I'm very curious. Why, why is Irish music your preferred genre of music? Um, for me, um, I, I went to Ireland uh, when I was a student to study English. And um, at the time, uh, I went to the pub every night and I saw uh, many musicians uh, playing together. And I, enjoyed very much. And uh, I wonder who, who is that people? Is, is it professional musician or, but um, of course we are not professional. They just gather and just uh, playing and enjoy music with drinking. And uh, I enjoyed very much. And uh, I decided I would do that. <laughs> <laughs> and of course I, I love traditional dance too very much. There's a lot of Irish people that hear music and they don't ever make the, the jump to being able to play it. You decided, I like that music. I'm going to learn it. I'm going to play it. And uh, I've already heard you playing and it's, it's incredible. It's, your music is amazing. Um, so we're very lucky to have you here and we're very honored to have you play for us tonight. So um, perhaps you could uh, select a, a tune that you'd like to, to, to open up with and maybe tell us what that tune is. Okay. Okay. Uh, okay. Uh, we are we are going to two home pipes. Uh, the first one is called uh, Battery Day, and the <clears throat> second one is called uh, Stack of Barley. Okay. Okay. Very good. <laughs> okay. Okay. <laughs> Thank you. 
Fantastic. Beautiful. Well done. Well done. So many uh, great comments and applause <laughs> from our audience. <laughs> so many comments. <laughs> uh, Stacy said, uh, this music makes me want to dance around my living room. <laughs> People think that they're in a, a pub in Ireland right now listening to this music. It's beautiful. It's beautiful. Um, Dermot is in New Jersey and he said, fantastic, what a session. It is a session of Irish music. This is beautiful, beautiful. Um, I know you're going, to, uh, you're going to stay with us for a little bit and, and uh, maybe drink some whiskey with us as well and, and play some more tunes. Would, would you like to play another tune now or would you like to wait until a little bit later? Yeah, yeah. Okay. Oh, uh, we'll play uh, another set of tunes. Great. And uh, we are going to play uh, two reels. Uh, the first one is called uh, Road to Gerson, and the second one is uh, Joe Brennan's. Uh, both of them are really commonly known in Ireland, so we learned this set uh, from the session in Galway. Yeah, yeah, yeah. In Galway, okay. <laughs> we hope you very enjoy. good. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you very much. <laughs> Thank you. 
Yes. <laughs> Amazing. Amazing. It's like being, I closed my eyes and I thought I was in Ireland. I thought I was in Ireland. That was beautiful. <laughs> Yeah, we, how, we, how, we to pray together. We we don't have so much session here, of course, now. So, uh, yeah, we enjoy praying together. <laughs> how long have you been playing together as as a band? About four, four, four years. Three or four years, maybe. Three or four years. Okay. And did you were you playing Irish music before that individually on your own? Yes. Yes. yes, yes. On your own. Yeah. Okay. Okay. And. Uh, in a normal year, uh, not like this year, but in a normal year, would you play in bars, at festivals? Where would you play your music? Yeah, um, uh, usually we play in a session, but sometimes uh, we play at the local events or okay. some local festival. So, like Rob said, uh, in 2018, we went to St. Patrick's Day Festival in Fukui. Okay. to play music and to play with other musicians from other places of Japan. Okay. So yeah, we did think about that. <laughs> what do you like about Irish music? What What do you connect to? Why Why does it feel so right to you to play <laughs> Irish music? <laughs> For me, I, I think uh, the, the one of the thing is just I like music but uh, other thing is there are so many tunes so yes. many <laughs> tunes to learn and so many good players and they play in different way so um, I feel that there is no no ending no, <laughs> I mean I mean we can yeah continue uh, enjoying ex exploring how, how, how <laughs> it's, yeah it's a very difficult question. <laughs> <laughs> when when was the last time you were in Ireland? In two years ago. Okay. Yeah, in May in 2019. Yeah, two we, we went to Ireland together, three of us. Okay. And did you have experiences like going into a pub and sitting in the corner and playing with a group and having a session? You did? Yes, yes, yes. We we went to mainly to meet great musicians in Ireland and to visit as as many sessions as we can. But uh, we went to um, we went to Kilbegan Distillery, and uh, we we took we took this photo. <laughs> oh, very good. <laughs> That's great. <laughs> We need to get you a sponsorship from the Kilbegan Distillery. They need to, uh, they need to pay you to play. Yeah, yeah. We, are just, we are just using that name. <laughs> I'll, I'll make a phone call for you. we we'll see if we can get you sponsors. <laughs> I hope they were, are. were Irish people surprised to see Japanese people playing Irish music? <laughs> mm, well, I think some, yeah. Many, many, many people many enjoy people. Irish music recently. Are, are more Japanese people falling in love with Irish music after they, they hear you play now? <laughs> we hope so. We hope so. <laughs> I think there's people all over the world falling in love with Irish music here now tonight <laughs> after listening to you play. Yeah, so. You have lots of whiskeys on the floor behind you. Um, <laughs> You know, in, in a good yeah. night in Ireland, in a good night in Ireland, we end up on the floor with the whiskey. Um, we don't yeah. always stay on our seats. You know, we're down on the floor with the whiskeys. Um, are there whiskeys that you'd like to? Are there? Do you have favorite Irish whiskeys from your collection there? Yeah, uh, we we used to buy uh, whiskey when we went to Ireland, and uh, we keep just photo as memory ah, they're all empty <laughs> all empties you drank them yeah. all already <laughs> kill megan excellent <laughs> well you have a lovely collection of whiskey or empty empty boxes anyway and uh, <laughs> that's a good sign it's a real a real irish fan 
Um, will, will you will you stay? Uh, will you come back to us again in a little bit and uh, join yeah. us for uh, maybe a drop of teeling whiskey in, in about a half an hour? Uh, we'd love to hear maybe another tune as well and uh, and talk yeah. to you again. Yes, fantastic. Yeah. Kilbeggins, thank you so much. We'll see you again shortly. Thank you very much. Yeah. Well, Rob, you, that was some introduction you made for us to to connect us with Kilbeggins. Unbelievable. There you go. I mean. Uh, Japanese enthusiasm uh, knows no bounds, you know. Uh, if they get into something, they don't go halves, and they do it proper and uh, go full hog. That's amazing. And doesn't it make you proud, though, as an Irishman, to to see that level of love for the country you grew up in? Absolutely. I mean, uh, they just get fully into it. Um a lot of the players out here, they will have come through the kind of uh, school system, through the brass bands, and they will have been uh, trained musicians and, and, and highly skilled. But then when they turn that skill onto Irish music, they're well able for it and uh, do a great job at it. It's amazing. Um, and it's, it's, it's just uplifting to see it and just to see the love for Ireland and to see you know, we take for granted. It's always the case, isn't it? The thing you, you grew up with and you're used to, you take it for granted. And then you see people who have not grown up with it, take a love and interest in it and dedicate so much time and interest and, and, and their skill to it. And then you see the, the fruits of that effort. It's, yeah. I mean, it would, it would make your, the, the hair in the back of your neck stand up. No, totally brilliant. And, um, you know, Kilbegans are great. And besides Kilbegans, there's a whole community of um, Japanese Irish uh, musicians out here that play sessions in the pubs and show up for the Paddy's Day events. And uh, there's um, Irish dancers and there's Bowron players and you name it, they're all out here and they're all very good at it. It's amazing. I mean, it, it, it's so great to see. Um, there's a few in our audience want to connect more with them. I'm going to put up here on the screen their Facebook page for those of you who want to connect with them and follow them. Uh, it's facebook.com, let me see, slash kilbeggins.kobe. And they are in um, the beef capital of Japan, presumably. <laughs> yeah. So uh, we have had whiskey from the back of a van, highballs and mini balls and we've had two traditional irish music tunes where next are we going in japan okay so um i thought um my perspective on irish whiskey would be kind of obvious uh you know being an irish person but what you really want to hear is from uh, a japanese perspective and somebody who is an enthusiast so um i got in touch with a man who proclaims to be the number one Irish whiskey fan in Japan. Uh, that's uh, an accolade because there's 127 million people here and this guy uh, comes out on top. Uh, he has over 250 bottles of Irish whiskey in his collection and uh, a very nice chap to talk to. And uh, I'm sure he'll give you an insight that you have not yet had before. And his name is uh, Tetsuro. Well, without further ado, let's bring in Tetsuro Hayakawa to chat to us about Irish whiskey. Tetsuro, you're very welcome to our lock-in yeah. tonight. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. <laughs> I'm a little bit drunk. <laughs> a little bit drunk already. <laughs> because good sound, good chat. I can believe it. <laughs> it's perfect. It's perfect. Yeah. Uh, that's all right. You if know, you're if you're drunk, there's no problem. Yeah, you know, <laughs> the red red breast fifteen years chaser as a highball. <laughs> exactly. There you go. You've got a great collection of whiskey there behind you. Uh, Thank you very much. Put, yeah, you, you'd put a lot of Irish people to shame with the with the collection there. Um, <laughs> why why do you like Irish whiskey? Why, why did you get into interested in it? Ah, uh, thank you very much. A uh, little bit long talk. Is it okay? Please. Yeah, okay. The first of all, I, uh, I love uh, Scotch whiskey uh, uh, like, that, like others. But uh, probably 2015, I met a uh, very fantastic whiskey from Ireland, uh, Bushmills 1988. Yeah, that was, it, 
has a, it contains a tropical fruit flavors, stone fruit flavors, exotic fruit flavors. I it's the flavor I love. So I noticed, I found this is my whiskey. Then I started the journey to the Irish whiskey. There, but the, at that fir, at the first time, I don't know what Irish whiskey is. Just uh, how to say a part of the whiskey, but uh, how to say. Uh, searching to the uh, searching of the uh, books, uh, searching uh, by the Google's uh, Irish whiskey is uh, based of uh, all whiskeys. Then I found uh, this is what I should do now. Yeah. Then, but the, uh, there is, I say, Japanese market doesn't have a. Uh, uh, Irish whiskey stock, just a standard lineup like uh, Jameson, Redbreast, like that, uh, 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 Kanimara. So I have to I have to uh, search by uh, online and by myself, and and also there was no friend who uh, has a uh, go who go travel to the Irish whiskeys. Uh, together, so just uh, uh, find uh, someone, do you know, some uh, place to uh, sell uh, Irish whiskey or well, I I would try to, I try, I checked uh, uh, in the internet, on the online to find uh, the shop, like an uh, authentic know, whiskey shop or uh, Marion, like that. And then I now I'm totally uh, get uh, this kind these kind of collections now. It's amazing. You're, I mean, you have whiskeys there that people dream about. You've got an old Gilby's Red Breast. I can see there an old Red Breast from the 1970s or 80s. I would think. Um, oh, yeah. You've got your Middletons. You've got Green Spot single casks. I can see yeah. you've got Teeling. Is that Teeling 24 year old there? Yeah. Um, so you you have to find your whiskies online. Then you have to ship them to Japan from from Europe. Uh, no, no. Um, some some sh some shops uh, so say uh, ship the, to the internationally, so I can get it. But uh, some, uh, for example, Middleton Distillery cannot ship to the Japan in, uh, in as say directly. So uh, the way to get uh, Middleton Distillery uh, uh, say bottles. I use a transfer company, uh, and it may, they have the warehouse in the Germany or United Kingdom. I ask them, uh, well, first, first of all, I say, uh, middle to distillery ship to the warehouse, then warehouse ship to Japan. Okay. So I can get it uh, uh, all of, uh, let's say, U EU limited bottles, yeah. You, you do more work to get Irish whiskey than any Irish person I've ever met. So sorry, <laughs> you're you're doing more work and putting in more effort to yeah, get your yeah, Irish yeah, whiskey yeah. than anybody. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I, I'd like to work for the Irish whiskeys, but uh, I have a uh, regular work now. <laughs> would you like to uh, Would you like to share a red breast fifteen year old with me? Yeah, 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 yeah. This one, yeah. This is uh, my standard be, whiskey. Oh, yeah. oh, Redbreast 21 is your standard, is it? <laughs> uh, 21. Oh, no, sorry. No, 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 no. <laughs> Not 21. You gave, you gave the thing. secret away there. No, no, you no, this 21 one. if you want. This one, this one. Yeah. Okay, you want for 15. I've got 15 yeah. as well. Okay. Yeah, very nice. Uh, new, um, new, new labels, yeah. When did you, do you remember when you first discovered Redbreast? When did you remember? Uh, probably three no, no, no. Four years before, probably. Yeah, I found uh, it's a great whiskey. Yeah, and uh, yeah, for example, yeah, you, you chatted uh, with a blog, uh, uh, Red West Dreamcast, yeah? Like one? Yeah. Oh, you've got yeah. the 32 year, 32 year old Dreamcast. Yeah, 32 years old. I have, a, I have two bottles here. You have two. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. But at that time, uh, it, uh, we can easily to get, but recently it is hard to get it. Yeah. Can you give us your address so we can visit you and uh, <laughs> help, help you with uh, opening those bottles? <laughs>
<laughs> yeah, okay, this this bottle will be uh, open to my uh, daughter's wedding ceremony. <laughs> ah, perfect, uh, perfect. So I cannot, I I have to keep until uh, probably ten or twenty years. Old. Yeah, <laughs> that, that's a good occasion. That's a good occasion. <laughs> yeah. Well, cheers, Campui. Cheers, Launcher. Yes. So this red breast, fifteen-year-old. Um, for those of you who are drinking along with us, who are following along and sipping with us, this fifteen-year-old is a different type of red breast. It's very spirit-led, spirit-forward. Yeah. Most red breasts would be focused more on the wine cask, the sherry, yeah. the port, and this is more focused on the spirit, less sherry, mm. uh, more use of second fill. Uh, mm. casks, um, second fill bourbon casks, second fill sherry casks. So there's less of the wood influence and more of the spirit influence. So some people love Red Breast 15 and some people hate Red Breast 15. Mm. I like it as a, as a comparison to the mm. other Red Breasts. Where, where does it fall for you? Do you, do you like Red Breast 15 year old? Yeah, uh, probably standard lineup. I mean, uh, Red Breast 20, uh, 12 years old or Red Breast 2, uh, 20, yeah. 31 years old, it's a, it's a great night, great whiskey. But I think, uh, how to say, I yeah, I have I have a uh, my uh, my company, my uh, drum club, like uh, called Irish Whiskey Enthusiast. This is my drum club name. Okay. Yeah. yeah. I I uh, I serve uh, this uh, red breast and uh, also. Uh, this 20 years old. Oh, yeah. Most of Japanese love this 15 years old. Oh. Probably the taste is much to the Japanese town, Japanese flavors. Okay. So and I don't know how, why I love this one, but uh, I think, I feel this um, 15 years old, uh, um, like uh, like mother's taste, you have to say. Mm, yeah, I have I have mothers of course. Yeah, when I drink uh, this uh, fifteen years old, uh, I'm very relaxing. I feel very relaxing. Yeah. Also, mm, this this place is mine. I mean, the very good, com good comfortable when I this. So so it's a not no reasons. This is this is my whiskey. <laughs> the um. You have more than 200 bottles, what, 250 Irish yeah, whiskey, yeah, yeah. right? Um, are they all open? Well, some of them are closed. Do you do you buy to collect or do you buy to drink? Uh, I, of course, I drink uh, to drink uh, all of whiskey, yeah. All whiskeys to drink. Good man. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. And also, uh, you told uh, you told uh, with uh, Robson, Mr. Ro uh, Miss Hennessy, uh, are the, uh, exclusive to Japanese market. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. For example, uh, Lambe. Yes, Lambe single cask for Japanese market. This is uh, exclusive ah. to Japanese. Yeah, and also sometimes uh, I found the bushmills for Japanese market. So. so uh, Sometimes we, I found uh, Jap uh, the bottles from Ireland uh, to exclusively to Japanese market, but uh, okay. not so not so often. What's the? Um, I'm looking at your shelves. What what is the sing the uh, green spot single cask on your top yeah. shelf? Which yeah, one is that? Yeah, this is for the whiskey whiskey exchanges. Oh, 26 year old. Yeah, but uh, not not well, not so. <laughs> not opened yet. Not open yet, yeah. That's a great whiskey. That's a great whiskey. Yeah, but I, I found uh, probably the same type of uh, cask uh, in your shelf. I've got some behind me there. Look, you can see the 26-year-old. Yeah, yeah. yeah, one bo bottle's one. almost empty. Same one. Mm. Yeah, yeah, it's very good. <laughs> it's very good. Yeah, um, we also have uh, uh, this kind of single cask for uh, Revolutions, Whiskey Bars, or Paris Bars. Yeah, you've got you've got a better a better Irish whiskey collection than most Irish people. <laughs> I know. Yeah, yeah. The reason why I uh, yeah, the reason why I love to the Irish whiskey is uh, how to say it's uh, a lot 
they have the many potentials to spread their word, I think. Yes. Uh, uh, now, recently, new distillery you know, starts and also started, and also they tried to, uh, how to say, uh, produce a new flavors or a new way of uh, matures, new way of to, to mature the bottles. It's, uh, I cannot find such kind of, uh, uh, let's say, process in the Scotch whiskeys. This is a very specific, uh, let's say, character or yes. way to, in the Irish whiskey. So, I feel the future in the Irish whiskey, yeah, probably 10 years or 20 years before, uh, only four dis four or three distilleries in the in Ireland, but now spread the the number is spread, and now thirty six or thirty nine. I, I, I forget yeah. the exact number. Right. Now the ten uh, over ten have say they spread the many uh, movement. And they yeah. create a big movement in Irish whiskey. And uh, to my story, in, in Japan, Irish whiskey is uh, uh, part of the Scotch whiskey or part of a bourbon whiskey. It's, um, okay. to, it's a, um, so I would like to tell all the whiskey lovers in Japan, the Irish whiskey is really, really, really great. And to that, uh, mo to that uh, as a purpose, I would like, I have to make a good uh, place to taste or to experience uh, great Irish whiskeys. So now I run the uh, my drum club now. But you're living you're living in Japan. Why why not focus on Japanese whiskey? It'd be easier to get. Ah. Why not? Uh, why no Japanese whiskey there? Yeah. Uh, first of all, Japanese. <laughs> I'm not sure. This is my opinion. Uh, Jap I I love to how say uh, I love to foreign uh, product or I love to uh, other press, uh, other than uh, Japanese. For, first of all, and uh, and also you know Japanese whiskey is hard to get now. Mm. Yeah, and for for Japanese. Uh, right. For example, for re recently, uh, Shizuoka District, the new distillery, they pro they ha they produce the uh, first single malt. It's uh, hard to get in uh, living in Japan. In living in Japan, okay. Yes. Also, the other uh, Akeshi distillery, uh, uh, many type of uh, distillery in Japan, but uh, it not isn't hard to get it. So I cannot, how to say, uh, I don't I don't know. I don't uh, want to uh, collect uh, such kind of uh, whiskeys uh, to as I make effort to get, uh, right. yeah, because it's uh, our own whiskey, it's uh, our Japanese whiskey, but it, I, yes. can, I cannot get it. Is it, uh, if I would like to, if I make uh, effort to get the whiskey, I'd like to, Get to uh, uh, say, uh, bottles from the overseas. Yes, from Ireland <laughs> especially. Yeah. Do you do you like your whiskey neat without water, or do you like it in highballs? How do you prefer to drink your whiskey? Ah, uh, it depends on the case. It on the opportunity. I don't know the uh, how to say, uh, the place and the time. Yes. Yeah. For example, the. Now Japan is uh, nine o'clock. Uh, I think it's uh, not suit for uh, drinking uh, straight. <laughs> it's a party. We're here for a party. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. but uh, it, and on the on the back of uh, these doors, my wife is uh, uh, say uh, sitting uh, sitting on the living. And why my my uh, husband drinking in uh, whiskey <laughs> from the morning? <laughs> yeah, you can blame me. You can point yeah, your finger yeah. at so, me. So I have to say this is uh, just a juice, you know, <laughs> apple juice. So this, now now the time, right? This is the time for uh, highball. Highballs, breakfast yeah. time for highballs. Yeah. Yeah. Does, does your wife like whiskey, or is it just? Uh, and she doesn't. Yeah. 
She doesn't. That's she good for you. Get a, you, you. Get a drink, yeah. More for you. More for you. Yeah. Um, yeah, so, what about um, the? Th there's been some Irish whiskey collaborations with Japan, uh, for example, using uh, Japanese oak Mizunara, uh, yeah, for yeah, example, yeah. Gl Glendalough Mizunara. Yeah, oak yeah, is yeah, one yeah, yeah. Writers Tears has a Mizunara cask finish. Yeah, Have you yeah, tried yeah, any yeah. of these? Yeah, I don't, I don't know the others, but Irish, Irish, Irish whiskey should be uh, more collaboration to the Irish and uh, the Japanese uh, casks. And also recently, you know, the Karak, Karak, yeah, Karak, they, yeah. Yeah, Karak, yeah. They uh, now recently uh, produce the wakame, wakame cask or kombu cask, a seaweed cask. Yes. Yeah, it's a very uh, strange sound for us. I know. How they to uh, make flavors to the cask. Yeah. And uh, we, we have uh, our and we are talking about uh, how to get the ca character from the iron uh, to taste uh, such kind of seaweed cask. Yeah. Is that what's interesting to you, uh, the different cask finishes? You mentioned that Scotland and America are maybe mm. not as innovative with their whiskies, but they also have restrictions on the woods they can use and the, the type, like for example, in Scotland, they can only use oak and in the United mm -hmm. States, they're using, you know, they can using virgin casks for bourbon, but in Ireland, we can use cherry wood, acacia, yeah. mulberry. Is that, is that something that's interesting to you? Yeah, yeah, of course, of course. For example, you know, these are no method of madness, yeah? Yeah, they listen to the mul mulberry uh, cask. Yes. Yeah. But also, so, this is this is why I love the Irish whiskey. It's a good, a, we are, I feel it's a potential and also a future and uh, no limitation. Just they we can we can say that Irish whiskey can uh, make their how say um, future uh, by themselves. So yes. yeah, yeah, that's a it's a good uh, how say um, power and a good. Mm, um, it's difficult to explain. No, it's it's, uh, it's a good. I think there's a good future for Irish whiskey in, in, yeah, in, yeah, yeah, in yeah, Japan, yeah. based on what you're sharing with me. Do do your your dram? You mentioned your dram club, uh, yeah. and you're introducing Irish whiskey to them. What has been their feedback? Their response to Irish whiskey? Yeah, with um, and uh, problem and uh, the participants of that uh, drum club is uh, uh, doesn't have uh, Irish whiskey experience. Most, most of all, most people. And uh, I, the way to introduce to them is uh, first uh, taste uh, uh, the standard lineup like red breast twelve, 12 years old or bushman uh, ten years old. Then uh, I. Uh, Serb, uh, for example, uh, 1982 Bushmills or uh, uh, like, uh, like how to say, uh, Red Vest 27, right? Then almost all people who found uh, surprise get, get surprised, though, and uh, they don't know, oh, uh, how to say, man, why Irish whiskey can. Uh, make uh, this kind of tropical flavors mm. um, and also to make uh, good uh, fruity flavors. Yes. Japanese people love to uh, uh, eat Irish whiskey's fruit flavors. Yeah. Especially. Yep. especially. Uh, we, we often say, um, we can say, um, People ha Japanese whiskey has uh, and, uh, Japanese people uh, tend to love to the tropical flavor, the fruit flavors now. Okay. Uh, so I think uh, they love they they have a good uh, characteristics to love to Irish whiskey. So to do that, uh, uh, taste taste the standard lineup is a. Uh, Important, but uh, to uh, how say almost Jap to love hmm? how say Japanese to Japanese people get to love to Irish whiskey. Yeah, uh, I have to uh, produce the place to experience uh, amazing 
bottles like yes. this. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. 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 So With this is uh, probably reason to get to love to ice whiskeys or uh, yes. by Japanese people. I'm and sorry. The if they, if yeah, they taste yeah, yeah, yeah. very good whiskeys, they'll enjoy them. Yeah, 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 yeah. Um, Thank you very much. Yeah. How, how many how many members are in your in your dram club? How many people? Uh, now we're twenty or thirty now. Okay. Yeah. And are they all? Do you meet in person? Um, you you share drinks in person, or are are these people all in? in they're in Tokyo with you. Yeah, of, almost all people in in Tokyo, but some some people comes from uh, uh, how to say. Uh, from from uh, more uh, north side or uh, south side or uh, yeah. uh, near near place to uh, place uh, living near Lobosan, Mr. Love, Mr. Hennessy now. Yes. Yeah. Well, what I'd like to do is I'm going yeah. to go to Kilbegans for a little bit more music. Okay. And I, I would love if you would stay with us because I think you are the number one Irish whiskey fan, not just in Japan, but in all of Asia. And what I'd like to do when we come back is I'm going to I'm going to pour a glass of something special. I'm going to open up one of my dream casks and drink it with you, um, yes. just to sip on it to celebrate your um, support of Irish whiskey. And maybe okay. you'll find something good on your shelf that you can open as well. So we'll we'll come back to you and we'll drink some good whiskey together in a little okay. bit. Yeah. Thank you very much. All right, Titsura. Thanks so much. We'll see you in a yeah. minute. Yeah. Rob Hennessy, you are producing oh, yeah. the greatest Irish whiskey and Irish music fans and evangelists ever known. This is it. I mean, uh, when I said they don't do things by halves, I meant it. I mean, Tetsuro there is uh, flying the flag with both hands. Uh, he's an absolute enthusiast. And sure, you couldn't ask for more. He's mad to chat and uh, up for whatever. Amazing. It's inspiring to see it. And uh, uh, I don't think anybody was expecting uh, dream casks to be pulled off the shelf and flashed in front of us tonight. That was a special treat. I mean, you name it, he's got it on the shelf there and uh, very proud of his collection. And uh, yeah, with his dram club and all the rest, he's, uh, he's spreading the word. Ed Powers in Ohio says, asks, does he have the story on his shelf? Um, well, I will, I'm will. i going to make sure that Tetsuro has um, at least a sample of my own whiskey, uh, the, the story. I'll get that to you, to you in Japan, Tetsuro, uh, because you need that on your shelf uh, so that I can proudly sit beside your other whiskeys. I'll make sure you get one of those. Um, why don't we go to for another tune, and then we're going to go to Tom. Um, from the Blarney Stone, who's going to talk to us about the pub culture and drinking in Japan. And then we'll go back to Tetsuro. I mean, I hope you've got no plans today because it doesn't seem like we're going anywhere. We're here for the day. I think uh, there's a nap in order, maybe uh, come 11 o'clock, but uh, I think Tetsuro might be on for one as well. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> on his way there. But uh, yeah, Tom, Tom will uh, fill us in on the bar culture and uh, yep. yeah, get back on to Kilbegans there because I'm sure they're uh, dying to give you another tune there. Perfect, perfect. We'll come back to you in a minute, Rob. Thanks a million. Okay, okay. Kill Beggins, you're back again. Um, I want to pour a little whiskey, and if if you'd like to join me for a little um, a little whiskey before you play or after you play, whichever you prefer. I don't know what makes the music better for you. You got some tealing there. Very good. You have tealing. <laughs> you have teeling. I'm going to pour a drop of uh, teeling single malt in my glass um, so that I can enjoy your music and enjoy the whiskey together. Um, you've, oh, you're already. Look, you're ahead of me. Very good. <laughs> yeah, yeah. We, we didn't plan to drink this morning, but uh, looking at your conversation. <laughs> <laughs> so what's the, what's the best way to say cheers in Japanese. Kampai. 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 So if you're at home and you're following along, we are uh, coming live from Japan tonight for the lock-in. Uh, we're about to hear Kilbegans give us another tune. We're sipping on our third whiskey tonight, which is Teeling Single Malt, which is uh, one of their core uh, whiskeys. 
which is has been aged in five different wine casks. Um, and it is, um, yeah, one of their core range of whiskies. Um, whiskies as old as about 30 or 23 years, I believe, in, in, in here, but also some younger whiskies as well, uh, vatted together to create their single malt. Um, so I'm going to sip on this single malt. Teeling is, is quite popular in Japan. Uh, Rob has uh, managed to um, uh, include uh, many teeling offerings in his van as well and connect with the teeling uh, brothers in Dublin. Um, so we're going to sip on that and celebrate teeling and Irish whiskey in Japan and Kilbegans, I'll, I'll turn it over to you to give us uh, the next tune tonight. Okay. Okay. Uh, we are going to play uh, three jigs. Uh, the first one is called uh, The Guard of the House. And the second one is called The, the Dawn Chorus. And the last one is called uh, Osiris Match. Kenpai. Kenpai. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. 
Thank you. That was that was wonderful, fantastic. What what's the name of that tune? Ah, yeah. Uh, first one is uh, the God of the House, and the second one is uh, the Dawn Chorus, and the third one is Osaliban's March. Okay, beautiful. That's great. Um, so many people are are loving the music tonight. People are tapping their feet all over America. Um, <laughs> People are yeah tapping their feet. People can't stop tapping. Woot woot says Mark. Um, lots of claps and cheers. Fantastic says Steve. Thank you. I'm gonna put all the claps up here on the screen so you see them all. That was fantastic. Um, Tammy says fantastic. Thank you. Um, when, when would you, would you like to go to Ireland again soon? When the when the world yeah, opens. Yeah, yeah, we hope so. Yeah. Mm -hmm. But we don't know when. <laughs> I know, I know, I know. D d very unusual times at the moment. Um, mm. But hopefully, hopefully we get to see you in Ireland. And I know that uh, some of our audience who are joining us from Ireland would love to see you play in Ireland too, uh, and, and are really enjoying the music. Um, lots more claps and cheers coming in. Um, are you going to Are you going to stay with us, or would you, um, for another another tune, or? Um, we, we're going to go to our is that you're, you're finished now that's the end of your uh you've you've played your tunes for us haven't you i think you've so, reached the uh, end of yeah we will play uh another another set of tune you got another yeah. one for us great this, this will be the last one um perfect yeah next time we play two band dances we we like playing band dance <laughs> <laughs> i think uh this tune uh, there are two band dances but both are called Jimmy Jaffe's. Jimmy Jaffe's. Yeah, and uh, they are often uh, played mm -hmm. as a set. So beautiful. Yeah, I hope you enjoy. <laughs> thank you for the thank you for the encore. We appreciate it. <laughs> yeah, thank you for having us. Thank you. Thank, thank you, you so much. <laughs> Thank you. 
Beautiful, beautiful. That was amazing. You, you've given us such a wonderful reminder of what it's like to be in a pub and <laughs> listening to great Irish music. And you, you, you've made this Irishman very proud to be Irish listening to your music. So I want to thank you for oh, your so talent. Awesome. Yes, thank you. We've had a lot of fun uh, listening to your music and uh, exp enjoying your talent so we're very privileged to have you tonight and uh i hope we get to see you in person at some point yeah, maybe in yeah. japan or ireland or somewhere and uh I'll, I'll buy you a glass of kilbegans whiskey when i see you <laughs> <laughs> so um if anybody would like to uh follow kilbegans you can follow them on their facebook page facebook.com slash kilbegans.kobe please go and like their page uh, give them some love, say hello, and uh, I know we've got many people in the audience who are very, very appreciative of your kindness and your talent and your uh, your skills and your music tonight, so thank you. <laughs> oh, thank you for coming. Thank you very much. We enjoy it very much. Thank you. That's fantastic. Thank you so much. We'll see you again in the future, hopefully. Yeah. We'll raise yeah. a glass. Kampai. Kampai. <laughs> Bye. <laughs> give them a follow. Give them a like. Give them some love. Please, Kilbegans on Facebook, facebook.com slash kilbegans.kobe. Um, you can go there and like their page and check them out. Uh, how lucky are we to have such talented musicians and interesting people join us on a Friday night? Uh, I feel very lucky and very privileged to be part of uh, nights like this when it's like a real lock -in, isn't it? When the, the floor just lifts, you don't know what's going to happen. You don't know what conversations you're going to have, but you know it's going to be a good night. You just don't know what's going to happen. And those are often the best nights. Uh, what a fantastic musical accompaniment we've had to our night tonight. So let's go back to Rob, and then we will be going to Tom, uh, who's going to fill us in on, on the pub culture in Japan. Rob, what about that? Was that unreal? That was something, eh? No, uh, I mean, totally fair play to Kilbleggans. You know, I didn't have to twist their arm or it. They were just mad for it and uh, <laughs> did their best. And uh, what more could you want, eh? Is there, is there a smaller uh, Hennessy uh, appearing there over your shoulder? <laughs> I'm clambering in here. Uh, he's hard work, but I'll try and get him in here. How many people can we squeeze into this whiskey van? I don't know. He's gone running off there, but uh, that's young... Uh, Desi Hennessy, who, who uh, is part of the team here. There's myself and Yumi, who's my missus, and uh, Desmond, who's the new addition. He's two years old, but uh, he helps us out at the events with the cute factor. Uh, and just small enough to fit into the van, too, and, and presumably pour a red breast. Just about fits in. <laughs> uh, I'll try and get him back. He's, he's after running off there, but I'll try and get him in here in a minute. We'll say hello before the night is out. Um, yeah, yeah, we get him. Where are we going next, Rob, in our whistle stop tour around Japan? Okay, so um, next, um, I'm grateful to have Tom O'Neill, who uh, is the owner um, of the Blarney Stone, which is a, a pair of bars in Osaka. Uh, which is maybe the second city to Tokyo. Osaka is a, a bustling kind of a, a nightlife city where there's great stuff going on and always a load of action. And Tom's had the Blarney Stone bars there for, um, I think, over 15 years. And they're busy bars where you'd have 
um, live music going on, uh, a host of Irish drinks, and uh, no shortage of crack uh, on any night of the week. Tom does drink specials and, and live music like no other place in Japan. Brilliant. How are you, do, how are you doing? Busy, yeah. Force onto the lock in. <laughs> we'll have to lock him in. Uh, he will. He's trying to escape out the window here. A little bit of red breast on the gums works wonders. <laughs> yeah. 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 Sometimes you would want to tranquilize him, all right. <laughs> <laughs> Well, why don't we we'll go to Tom and we'll have a chat about about pubs and then I'll come back to yourself and uh, and yeah. Tetsuro and we'll sip some good okay. whiskey together. How about that? Okay, sounds great. Cheers, Rob. Mr. Tom O'Neill, a man from Wicklow, all the way all the way from Wicklow, living in Japan. How are you? I know, yeah, a little bit crazy. I'm pretty good. Uh, Ohio Gozaimas. Good morning, everybody. And good morning, Tom. Good morning, Stone. Listen, you're you're fly literally flying the flag for Ireland there behind you. Uh, there you go, yeah. This was from the Rugby, uh, Rugby World Cup, yeah? Okay, so, uh, yeah. I, I put it up there to create a little bit of atmosphere in my living room. Uh, the bar is in lockdown, so not much happening there. That's the kind of flag that you'd bring to the stadium and you'd be waving like from the stands. There you go, yeah, looking for a little bit of advertising, yeah? Free <laughs> advertising. I am from Wicklow. What's a Wicklow man doing in Japan and how did you get out there? And don't tell me a plane. Yeah, well, there you go, yeah. Um, I was a little bit like Rob. I was in Australia and uh, I met lots of Japanese people down there. And I said, wow, that sounds like a, a fun place to go to. And I had some friends here in, um, I think it was 1991. And then I stopped off here on my way back to Ireland. And I couldn't find the airport to get out of here. So I'm still here. So 30 years ago this year, it's a long time ago. You must like it <laughs> if you're there that long. Uh, again, as Rob was saying, it's a, a really an amazing place, extremely safe, and everybody is really welcoming. So, uh, yeah, I have no complaints about Japan. It's an amazing place. Were you – so you're, today you're running the Blarney Stone. Um, were you involved in the drinks world or the pub world at all before you got to Japan? The only way I was involved was drinking. Good man. Um, I, I'm, a I'm a teacher. I was a teacher back home, and I took a career break to go traveling the world. And um, uh, I was in Japan teaching for a number of years, and I said, I want a good pint of Guinness. Sorry, I'm going away from the whiskey world, but I said, I want a good pint of Guinness. And I said, that, wow, I can't find one in Osaka. And... Um, so I said, like, why don't we, with a friend of mine, I said, why don't we open an Irish pub? And um, there is another Irish bar down the road called Murphy's, which does have a good pint of Guinness, but right. it just wasn't uh, good enough for me. Sorry. <laughs> Sorry, Murphy's. <laughs> so you said, I'm going to build my own pub just I'm to get to myself a good pint pub, of Guinness. Yeah. I was just a little bit stubborn. A good <laughs> pint of Guinness and a good pint of Kenny. That's what I wanted, yeah. And how is the Guinness there now at, at the Blarney Stone? Uh, it's the best. The best you'll get in Japan. Uh, <laughs> uh, we put a lot of effort into it, and we sell, a, we sell a lot of Guinness and a lot of Kilkenny. And so right? it's always moving, so therefore it's always fresh, so we never get a complaint. So uh, it's, we have the guys coming from Ireland and say, wow, I didn't know Guinness could be so good outside of, uh, of Dublin, yeah? I am. Um, I have some pictures of the pub here. I want to put up, and I, and I'm very curious uh, about uh, about this pub. So, it, um, there's two of the pubs, is there? Um, I, have, yes, I think I have pictures two, yeah. of. Okay. We have two, yeah. And um, are they near each other? They are. They are about um, a ten minute taxi ride. Apart. Okay. What is the what defines an Irish pub in Japan? It has to be the crack. <laughs> You have to create a atmosphere where everybody can enjoy themselves and everybody feels welcome. Um, this is a, a typical Friday night or a Saturday night. Uh, the band's name is Soul Kiss, a uh, very international uh, band that play for us a lot. And uh, they create the atmosphere where people can get up and dance and uh, enjoy meeting their friends and, of course, uh, have good food and drinks all night. What do you, what kind of, uh, 
an audience comes to the pub then i mean who would be a, the clientele of 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 the blarney stone in osaka before COVID, we had a lot of flight crew pilots flight attendants okay. who would come in early in the evening and we have a good selection of craft beers as well as in and kilkenny and they would come in for those type of drinks and of course whiskey whiskey is a big seller for us they would often go for the hakushu and the yamazaki and whatever the japanese whiskies but um we would also have like you know connemara they like connemara as well and uh, of course teeling and thank you rob i have a teeling a teeling cup <laughs> yeah and I tried, to push, I tried to push teeling a little bit and uh, so everybody gets a, a little bit of a you know gets a, gets a little bit of sales in japan but um let, yeah. let, let me ask you this what what is a wicklow man doing running a pub with a, a name related to cork more so than wicklow with the old blarney stone well we reckon that at that time was what 18 years ago 18 years ago now that we opened we reckon the blarney stone had a nice sound to it and um a good story behind it and japanese people love a good story so uh, we've used that to the best of our ability over the last uh, 18 years to tell the story of the blarney stone so and we need we just thought that cork really needed a a little bit of a help yeah cheers so yeah i appreciate that yeah. Thanks, thanks we, didn't that. Call, we didn't call it glenda lock <laughs> Do you, you don't hang people backwards over a over a stone wall to kiss a stone on the wall or anything do you <laughs> no we don't we don't but uh, we, we sometimes threaten them <laughs> <laughs> um help us understand um tom the the drinking culture the alcohol culture in japan um you're you're 30 years or however many years out of ireland now um um but I'm sure you've got great contrasts and kind of a, you're, you're seeing the differences very clearly. Help us understand what's different about how they consume alcohol in Japan. Well, we are an international pub. So we would have probably, of course, a lot more Japanese than foreigners, but it depends on the time of the, the day and the day of the week. Um, but on a Friday and a Saturday night, we would have a lot of Japanese who are coming in for the live music and uh, meeting people. Meeting people is the key. Everybody wants to meet and drinking and meeting people is a, a great way to go. So the foreigners are coming in for a little bit of an escape from Japan away from home. And the Japanese are coming in to meet the foreigners who are, and maybe not exactly meet, but just to be in the atmosphere, the atmosphere of an Irish pub where there's always a lot of crack. Are there certain day parts typically in Japan that would where more alcohol will be consumed. I mean, in Ireland, you know, it's kind of a nighttime thing. You go to the pub, it's a weekend thing. It, is it different in Japan or is no, it, is it really. much the same? Again, after work from five, from five is when we would uh, get busy. And then on Friday, Saturday nights, and then on Sunday, Sunday evening early would be a very busy time. But Friday, Saturday nights, we have live music. So therefore people come in for the live music. And of course, we have a dance floor where people love to dance. And again, it's a great place to meet people. Yeah, the dance floor is a great place to meet people. Uh, yes, as you're as you're showing there, and um, everybody seems to enjoy it. How do the Japanese take to Irish whiskey? Then is is have you seen it being called for more? Um, is is it still early days for Irish whiskey in Japan from your perspective? Everybody knows. Jemison, yeah, and Tullamore Jew, and um, maybe Connemara a little bit, and then we push Teeling a little bit, and um, they know a lot of Scotch whiskies, mm. but we always try to point them to the Irish whiskies, and we get, we tell them like they, they always know the the very smoky Scottish ones, yeah, because they create a they create a a memory, yeah, but we push them like they like smoky, we push them to Connemara, yeah. Yeah. And uh, again, red breast, red breast is a really good one. And that 15 years is a really good one. So uh, we try to educate them. And again, Japanese will love, they always love to try new things. And they'll always, what do you recommend? Yeah. And we always recommend the Irish whiskies and Bushmills and yeah. 
Oh. Is there an Irish community that works in the bar? Where where would the staff in the in the bars come from typically? Our managers are French. Oh. And the reason that they are French, the Irish guys, the Irish guys and girls that come here um, usually go into the teaching industry. So they're teaching English. And then the French usually end up in uh, restaurants and bars. So both our managers, our manager in the Umeda branch, which is the, the, the first branch, is Max. And then in the second branch is Yannick. So they're both chefs and uh, uh, make sure that the food is uh, top class, but also create a great atmosphere because they're great characters. I was looking at your website earlier and um, spotted the different nights that you have. And I was uh, very curious about your Wednesday night English club, free English yeah. conversation. Tell us a little bit about that. Well, we try we try our best to uh, educate the Japanese on Irish English, no TH. <laughs> no, we have, our English club is an amazing, amazing event because it's free, so everybody can come and just uh, meet some foreigners who sort of volunteer to teach or to just um, chat with local people about. Uh, whatever is the topic of the week. So it's a very uh, interesting event. And then you get to meet lots of people. And uh, again, foreigners get to meet Japanese where they wouldn't often get to meet Japanese. And um, yeah, great, great event. I love that. I love that. What about this uh, picture to the left of it? Uh, I'm guessing slightly less educational, the 100 Pint Club. Um, yeah, the 100 the Pint Club, you have, <laughs> yeah, you, have to ha you have to do it in one night. <laughs> so you can see that we don't have too many people up there you have to do it in one night no it's a, a point card system and it's it's our irish beers the guinness uh kilkenny and murphy's murphy's at one stage but we seem to be having difficulty getting murphy's now in japan mm. so uh it's guinness and kilkenny mainly yeah but again really really popular guinness kilkenny is there a time limit on how long it can take you to reach the 100 pints? Could you commit your life to it, for example? Yes, you could commit your life to it. And you can do the second round as well. We have a couple of Japanese people who are on the second round. So uh, they're trying to get up to 200. I, I feel like if you could replace the pint club with a whiskey club, we could give you some great promotion every week here and send... Oh, uh, like, you're talking to an Irish man and you're talking promotion? Wow, well, I listen to you every day of the week. No problem. Come on. <laughs> <laughs> free press great yes, free promotion yes, yes. yeah we will put up we will put up the uh, the whiskey the whiskey board up there anytime anytime you like free uh, yeah the, the 100 whiskey club would be a great uh, milestone right club, yeah is there a, is there a prize apart from just uh, bragging rights on the little the little brass plaque for the 100 pint club of course, you get a, you get our very popular t-shirt and our right. uh, uh, we, whatever maybe freebies we get from Guinness or whoever and we pass those out, and that's your little prize for uh, uh, frequenting the Blarney Sun for a few nights. Have you any regrets, like, in terms of, you know, you, you grew up in Ireland, you started traveling, uh, you've settled now in Japan, you've opened these, these Irish pubs. Is there anything you wish you'd done differently um, now that you're, you know, obviously the world has changed dramatically and you things out of your control, but what would you do differently? Uh, yeah, we can all look back and uh, say we should have done things uh, differently, but um, I'm pretty happy. I quite enjoy the Jap Japanese life. Um, again, going back to the safety, again, you can wa uh, walk out of the pub at 2 or 3 o'clock on a Saturday night, and just, it's completely safe. You just uh, you can fall down the street, and people will just put you sitting up against the wall or whatever and just leave you. They don't uh, take your wallet or your phone or whatever else. So it's a really it's great amazing. place to be. And uh, again, the Japanese are so welcoming. And of course, the foreigners here as well, the expats. The expats are a great community. And we have, again, quite a few Irish people. I, again, I live in the big city. So yes. there's quite a few Irish people who live here. And we have them as regular customers. And uh, it's great to see them coming in because you can sort of relax a little bit and talk the old, uh, the old um, well, Irish English, I suppose, yeah? Stop pronouncing your THs, as you said. Yeah, exactly. Stop pronouncing your THs, and, and they'll even understand you, yeah? 
What's the um, so you mentioned that the pubs are closed from lockdown? What what does that look like right now in Japan? Is that a blanket uh, across the board lockdown for all businesses in, in the country? Yes, it is. Yes, it is.、Uh, it was until the eleventh of May, and now it's been extended. I think until the end of May, so it's not looking good. This is our eighteenth anniversary month. So May is when we open. So we were planning for a, a big party for our 18th anniversary, but、um, yeah, we'll just put it off and whatever.、Um, yeah, it's tough times for this business,、uh, but again,、yeah. most bars are shut down, so we're all in the same boat. But、uh, hopefully, when it's all over, we're looking for one of your shots, the shot of vaccine, not the shot of vaccine. Got, looking for the shot of vaccine, yeah. I just got my、oh. second one now today. I feel very lucky、uh, to well, have got well it. Well done. Yeah. Well, it's, it's a little bit slow in Japan here, so we're hoping to、uh, get the shot of vaccine, and then we can get back to the shots of whiskey. I know. I know. How long have the pubs been closed now? The business has been closed in Japan. We've been closed. We've been half closed. We had to close at like eight o'clock, eight p.m.、Yep. for、uh, maybe about a month, and then two weeks ago, maybe two and a half weeks ago, we had to shut down completely. Uh, again,、okay. we're allowed to open, but we're not allowed to sell alcohol. So we've chosen to、uh, shut down. So you're not yet in the boat of the Irish, the poor pubs in Ireland being closed now for a year, which they never、no. expected to be. Yeah. No, and we're getting some support from the、uh, government, so that, that helps us a lot. And hopefully, then we can、um, get up and going again as soon as we get that vaccine. I know. I know. Fingers crossed that that.、Uh, fingers crossed. Yes, fingers crossed.、Um, you were presumably then you were in Japan for the famous Irish football period of two thousand and two and Saipan and、yes. great commotion around Japan.、Um, yes. Were you at the at the at the World Cup at the time yourself? I was indeed. I was indeed. I followed.、Uh, I followed Ireland around、uh, around Japan. I didn't. I didn't make it over to Korea, but I did follow them around Japan. And、uh, if you mention、uh, Roy Keane, everybody knows Roy Keane. He's a famous name in Japan. I don't know why. Don't know why. He's maybe just a great footballer. I think, but、uh, he's definitely famous. Is he famous for good reason or bad reason? Is he liked uh, or, or hated? He's, he's, he's from Cork, so it has to be a good reason. <laughs> I don't know. Sometimes in Cork, we might not even claim him. You know, <laughs> <laughs> no, he he was a great footballer, so we have to、uh, give him his dues. So he was, he was. He used to play for my、uh, my hometown team of Cove Ramblers、oh, when I was growing he, up. He, yeah, he he got a start. I, I think everybody he was disappointed that he didn't play because he was such a great footballer. But again, he couldn't fit into the system, so that's the way life goes. But、uh, is, yeah. I know,、yeah. I know.、Um, so, if the pubs open up again soon,、um, are you will will service or your approach to running the pubs change in any way? Like, has this changed how you think about、uh, how you do business? But in this business, in our business, we're always improving.、Um, there's no, there's no perfect, perfect situation. Yeah. Uh, we are taking this opportunity to make sure that our bars are a little bit renovated, paint, paint, and clean, and so on. And we're making a new website, so we're,、um, you know, getting the business running a little smoother. But again,、yes. we've lost、yes. a lot of our staff, our, our part-time staff. We've lost a lot, so that's always hard to get back again and build up that、uh, build up that. Smoothness that you need to run a business, but yeah, yeah. we'll get there again. And、um, again, we have our customers waiting to come back, and we have our musicians waiting to come back, and maybe the Gilbegans will even play. Yeah, there you go. Yeah, there you yeah. Go. yeah. When was the last time you were in Ireland, Tom? It was in 2018. Okay. 2018, 20, twenty. Maybe no, maybe actually it was 2019, and in the spring of 2019. Okay.、Um, Yeah, I have a Canadian wife, so I go back to Canada quite a lot. Ah. So、um, yeah. So when you fly, do you fly、uh, east from Japan to get to Canada, presumably, or、uh, do you fly west? I fly east. Yes, I east. fly. I fl- I usually fly through New York or maybe Newark or Chicago or whatever. Yeah. So, we're、um, my wife and I were we're living in California. We're living in San Diego at the moment, and、um, yeah, we're determined. To get out to Japan while we're out here, because the flight west from San Diego to Japan is probably the best chance we'll ever have of getting a 
getting a, a relatively easy trip to Japan, you know? A hop, skip, and a jump, and you're here. That's all it and, takes, yeah. And the, whis and the whiskey will be waiting. Oh, brilliant, brilliant. Can we get that in writing? We have this recorded. <laughs> no, no, no. I'm from, I'm from Wicklow. <laughs> Nothing in writing. Nothing. I'll be paying for it, but they'll be ready like. <laughs> yeah. Well, hopefully we get to um I'd love to I'd love to have a pint. I'd love to have a, a try some of your uh, uh infamously good Guinness or so you say a, a corkman will put it properly to the test like and see if it really is good. Um, yeah. but uh, be great to get out to Japan and and we we've been talking about it for a while. We'd love to do it when the world opens up. Well, you'd be very welcome anytime, and um, you can visit Fukui and visit Osaka, and there you go, and Tokyo to see Tetsuro, and uh, you have That's your trip nearly planned. I tell you what, um, none of you, none of you knew this tonight, but this was just me organizing my trip to Japan, bringing you all together <laughs> here. <laughs> yeah. um, well, listen, um, for those of you who are following along um, and uh, have an interest in checking out more of uh, Tom's Pubs, Blarney Stone, visit www.the-blarney-stone.com and check it out there. And uh, Tom, thanks a million for, for sharing some of your journey with us. And uh, Kampai. Kampai. Cheers, the last, you? The, the first drink of the day. Good man. May it not be your last. <laughs> uh, <laughs> Tom, thanks a million for joining thanks us. Thank you very much, Barry. Take care. Slauncha, all the best. Slauncha, bye bye. The guests keep on coming. They keep on coming. And uh, great to hear from Tom O'Neill, Irishman flying the flag, literally, for Ireland out in Japan and um, running two great pubs in Osaka. So hopefully we can. Uh, It'd be great to spend time in person with all of our guests tonight. Uh, let's go back to Rob, and then we're going to go back to Tetsura as well, because we're going to wrap up our night with probably a few good whiskeys. Uh, not that the first three have been in any way inferior, but uh, we might be taking things up a notch now for our last whiskey, seeing as we're celebrating. We're celebrating Tetsura's uh, fantastic collection. Uh, let's bring Rob in first. Rob, <laughs> how are how you? Are? How are you, Barry? I'm still here, hanging in. I hope you don't have claustrophobia because uh, for the amount of time you've been spending in that van, you'd be you'd be sick as a dog. No, I think uh, I don't have claustrophobia. I think I have that thing where you get on the long haul flights where your knees clamp up and you you get some kind of a blood clot in your legs. Jeez, <laughs> don't be getting blood clots now. <laughs> I can't stand up in the back of this thing, so uh, I'm on my knees. <laughs> yeah. We 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 can't be losing people on the lock in. That wouldn't be good advertising for us. I'm hanging um, in, I'm hanging in. All right, so let, we're, we're going to go back to Tetsura, and we're going to bring in some, three of us are going to talk about whiskey. And um, Tetsura, you're, you're still vertical, you're still alive, even though uh, you've, you've had some good whiskeys. Are you okay? Yeah, yeah, yeah I'm, a, I'm too drunk, yeah. <laughs> too drunk, you're great. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, because you know, this is a now at nine o'clock, I, I drunk already a three. <laughs> Jumps now. <laughs> open the dream cask. Open the dream yeah. cask. The... <laughs> yeah. Yeah. No, don't open the dream up cask. On, uh, it's no, 10 o'clock now that. here. <laughs> All right. I'm going to, I want to get something off my shelf. So let me grab a good whiskey from my shelf because yeah. if Tetzer has got such good shelves as that, I, I have yeah. to find something special. I don't know what I'm going to find. Let me really? see. Maybe a dream cask or something. Yeah, really? What's that? Are you still okay there, Tetsuro? I'm okay. I'm uh, just okay. <laughs> okay. How's Tokyo today? Oh, very fine, very fine. But uh, I, I'm, uh, I don't go out uh, from my room, so I don't know the, uh, uh, the weather, the climate. I don't know. <laughs> okay. Sunny day here in Fukui. It's oh, about, sunny uh, day. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, sunny here, about uh, twenty degrees. I think so, yeah. It's a good spring days. Yeah, let's enjoy it. Yeah. Rob, did you lose? You lost Desi. Desi's gone. Desi's not coming back. He's off watching dinosaurs on the TV, possibly. He knows better. He knows better. Yeah. <laughs> All right. I'm, I'm going to... I'm going to pour. <laughs> this one. That's the one. Of course yeah. you have it. <laughs> Mine's almost gone. You're oh, you, oh, you, oh, almost all you drunk, yeah? We might finish it tonight. Ah. We'll finish it tonight. I'm celebrating not, you. Not open, yeah? <laughs> no, don't, you don't have to open it. There's no, yeah, no pressure. Right. Yeah. <laughs> Let me get a fresh glass here. I'm going to grab a fresh glass. 
Yeah, I'm, Rob, I'm a worry about, I'm, I'm, I'm a, I'm a worry about which photos I should uh, open better. This one is, uh, first powers single cask. Yeah, cask oh, okay. with, so. with the new friends, label, looks very friends nice. Friends of Middleton. Yeah, Look Friends of Middleton. I got the recently. Yeah. Where did you get that there? <laughs> Did yeah, you buy that go. online? Yeah, okay, I open here. <laughs> okay. All right, we're killing this. The end of the battle. Oh, you, you finished. Listen, uh, <laughs> I can't join you on that because I don't have ah. that here, but I'm going to have uh, thanks to Tetsuro. Tetsuro sent me across a lot of uh, samples. Yeah, so yeah, I'm yeah. Going to, I'm going to pour uh, Blue Spot, seven-year-old cast oh, string. Spot, yeah. So. Uh, cheers this to one. Tetsuro and thanks for all the samples and for flying the flag. Fair balls. Wait a second, I'm enjoying it. We wait for Tetsuro. Yep, yeah. yeah. There he is, you got the blue spot. Slauncha. Slauncha. Kampai. Slauncha. Kampai. And Kampai and whatever other language you speak. Mm. Good fragrance. That blue spot is great. That's a lovely drop yeah. of whiskey, that blue spot. Um, you know, we should all be in the same room at the moment. Not the same van, but the same room uh, drinking whiskey. And maybe we'll have to make that happen in the future. Mm. Well, making the same van happen might be a bit tight. That would be tight, yeah. Uh, the same you room can't even stand up. Is, is possible. And uh, Barry, we would love to have you out here because there's lots to see and do and... Uh, Oh, we'd love to do the it. The Irish whiskey flag, uh, we could certainly put it together uh, out We're here. We're going to do it, hundred percent, uh, and make yep. make a bit of crack out of it. We are. Di we've been talking about Japan for a long time, and we'd love to tour the whiskey distilleries and meet up with yourselves and uh, drink a little bit of whiskey together. Oh yeah, we'd love it. We'll do it. We'll definitely do it as soon as the world is ready to receive vaccinated Americans. We'll be over there. Mm. So how do you think Jackson, about uh, Jackson, yeah. Japanese whiskey, uh, Barry? You know, I've not had a lot of experience with Japanese whiskey. And mm -hmm. um, I've, I've started to become interested and in learning about it. Um, but I'm learning about it without tasting it at the moment because I'm mm -hmm. so busy with Irish whiskey. Mm -hmm. I don't find the time <laughs> yeah. for any other whiskeys, you know. But I'm, I'm fascinated by it. And I've been following the journey over the past few months of the new rules about Japanese mm -hmm. whiskey. And what is and is not I uh, mm. is and is not Japanese whiskey. So what I really need is I need a Japanese whiskey expert to help me understand mm. Japanese whiskey. And, uh, yeah. and maybe it's something we do here on the lock in in the future. Mm. But I need someone to explain it to me properly. You know, okay. and help me understand. Okay, I would like to help you. Yeah. Yeah. Re recently, a Japanese a Japanese whiskey has a two. To not not to ranks, the stamp, uh, as you know, you know the yoichi or hakushu. Uh, that's kind of a traditional Irish uh, Japanese whiskey. is a very nice whiskey, but uh, recently, uh, not uh, properly, um, has a a bulk, you know, bulk whiskey. You know, bulk bulk whiskey. Yeah, the uh, yep. the Japanese some some whiskey company import from the. Uh, uh, Scotland and they produce as uh, they produce whiskey as a Japanese whiskey. It's a, yeah. a it's a it's a big problem in Japan now. Yes, yes. So 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 many people doesn't know it's a it's a whiskey made in Japanese or may I say that's a Japanese whiskey from whiskey. Uh, so we have to tell about uh, uh, the what uh, this whiskey from is. So. If you don't, if you have some uh, pro uh, problem or some question about that, please tell me. Please tell uh, Robson. Say we we can help you. Yeah. I I know that Irish whiskey and Scotch whiskey finds its way to Japan and mm. is blended and sometimes not blended with Japanese whiskeys and uh, yeah, that can be confusing uh, because mm. it, it 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 makes us wonder what is Japanese whiskey and uh, mm. because. It, I think in the future we'll know what Japanese whiskey is because it'll be made in Japan uh, from mm. Japanese water and and and, uh, and we'll know. But uh, for, for the moment, I think it's going to be confusing for a few years. Um, mm. 
Rob, you're you're sipping on blue spot um, there. Have you tried? Have you had the blue spot before? I've never had blue spot before, so it's thanks to Tetsuro who sent me across a couple of samples that I have it here. So uh, very delicious, Tetsuro. Yeah, 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 three, yeah, three or uh, three or four days before, yeah. Yeah, thanks a million. I mean, uh, Tetsuro is a legend. He sent across. Uh, five or six samples all printed and labeled up uh in little uh minis uh, <laughs> so, uh no holds barred tetsuro uh got the job done and uh fair play to him are you professional up? yeah <laughs> tetsuro um people in america are surprised to see that you can get blue spot in japan and they can't even find it in florida in um, oh, really? <laughs> so people are wondering how do you get your blue spot did you have to order it from overseas uh yeah of course yeah get well get from the middle channel directly but uh, at that time i cannot get uh, directly so as i told you before i just uh order and uh, send to the germany then from from germany to japan then I got okay. it, and uh, also uh, I have a good uh, I have a good uh, let's say relationship with a bar in the located in the Kobe, uh, which place is uh, let's say the the member of the Kyrbegan's place, yeah. Uh, the yep. the bar the bar is the name of the main malt main malt uh, uh, the big place of the Irish whiskey bar in, in Japan, I think. Yeah, yeah, I imported uh, from the Middleton with uh, from Middleton, and I sent the blue spot to the uh, to his bar, uh, uh, name uh, main main mold. Okay, okay. Yeah, so please enjoy at uh, that bar. Yeah, <laughs> in, 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 yeah. We you'll have to when we come when we come to Japan, we'll have to go to that bar and we'll drink yeah, all course, of their please, 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 Yeah, please tell me the when you come to Japan. I'll Absolutely. Take you the, yeah, take it there. Yeah. Do you like um, so? Blue Spot is the first spot whiskey in the regular lineup of, of spot whiskeys that is at cask strength. Is yeah. this? Do you like cask strength whiskeys? Yeah, it's difficult because when I drink uh, Scotch whiskeys, uh, uh, cask strength is the uh, most important uh, element. But uh, when I experience Irish whiskey. It's not so important. Branded experience, uh, also the pot whiskey is uh, most ex most powerful and the most important element in the, uh, the whiskey uh, area as uh, a world. So recently, I don't think uh, cask strength is not so important. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Just yeah. Adding water, uh, forty per forty percent or forty three percent is very nice. I think. I've always found that the the whiskies from Middleton Red Breasts and the Spot whiskies, even when they're at cask strength, I never need to add water. They they don't feel they don't feel like they're that high proof. Mm. They don't feel like they're such high cask strength. Like you said, Scotch, it might feel a little bit. Some of the scotches I've tried at cask strength have been mm. harsher. But Irish mm. Middleton whiskies, they there's a mellowness to them at cask strength, which is enjoyable. Mm. Yeah, but uh, I think that, uh, uh, for example, wait a second, please. Yeah, like a uh, red breast, uh, all sherry, all sherry from the probably this is uh, Middleton and the both retail history. For yes. example, this this kind of uh, whiskey it should be a uh, cask strength because uh, yeah, uh, this should be a uh, taste as it is. I think so. For now, these are for the uh, twenty one years old or uh, wait a second. 15 years old, yeah. is, uh, of course, uh, 14 or 15 and uh, 43 or 46 year percent is now. Okay. But uh, this old sherry should be the cask swing, I think. And what is it? Is that 46% that one as well? Oh, sorry. This this one? Yeah. And this one is, uh, sorry, uh, 459.3% oh, okay. now. 59.3%. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. 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 Here's, here's another one that's at cask strength. What from from the uh, whiskey exchange? Yeah, ah, what's this? Thirty years old. Yeah, I, I've got it. Yeah, of course I, you do. Of course. I, you I, do. I, 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 <laughs> yeah, I have two bottles of that. That's <laughs> real. That's real. How's about yes. this one that you sent me across here? Uh, I don't know if you can see it. Uh, 
It's a rum cask, uh, 23 year old. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Wait a second. This one, probably. Yeah. Abash. Yeah, this is a barrage of that uh, tilling, tilling. Yeah, when I visited uh, two years before, I mean, uh, 2019, I, I went to the tilling uh, distillery directly. Then I, got, I uh, did the hand field. That, uh, okay. That's a, a sample of that bottles. So you hand filled it? Yeah, it's very, very impressive experience <laughs> yeah lots of people tetsura lots of people are, are wondering with all of these whiskies that you have right now which one are you most excited about opening next ah uh, <laughs> next me <laughs> maybe not today you know but in the future <laughs> uh, yeah uh, uh but uh the question I, may, I, means it's difficult. Yeah, but I, <laughs> have you ever did, have you ever seen this uh, labels? No, yeah. Emerald Isle, twenty six year old. No. Yeah, from a whiskey exchange of the United Kingdom. Okay. Yeah, this is from uh, probably this is uh, Bushmills. Okay. Cas from uh, the, uh, understanding from the cask number one six two four four. This is a pro probably uh, Bushmills. Okay. This is amazing. And also, this um, uh, this is a, from a Scotch bottlers, a motor barns. Motor uh, barn, yeah. Yeah, Ireland, 27, 1989. So also yeah. a um, Bushmills, presumably. Yeah, of course. Yeah, of course. Yeah. Yeah, I love uh, 1989. I think uh, very um, exciting vintage i think because yes nine, 1991 or 1988 is a very good tropical fruit flavors also mm -hmm. the vivid taste but i think 1989 is a more calm calm how say not not vivid okay uh, you can enjoy it smoothly and also yes. enjoy it as it is so I think uh, if I uh, open the bottles uh, or Irish uh, whiskeys, I opened the 1989. It's a better, I think. I, I've never seen that bottle before. That, oh, really? That, that malt bar. No, never. Yeah. No. yeah sometimes, you know, um, um, Scotch bottles release uh, Irish whiskey uh, as a uh, bottle from Ireland sometimes. I have uh, many bottles from uh, over 50 or 60 okay. bottles from the Scotch bottlers of okay. uh, Irish whiskey. That's uh, the base basement of my uh, knowledge or basement of my um, interest uh, for Irish whiskey. Yeah. So did you did you try any of the Bushmills, um, the Causeway collection? Ah, uh, I have never. I I haven't got uh, you know. Five yeah. seconds. I don't open this is a 28 years old uh, oh, yeah. uh, cognac yeah. cask from uh, probably uh, Maison, de, Maison de Whiskey from uh, Fr France, French. Yeah. And also, uh, also, I have a 30 years old of uh, Cosmic Correction in the Cork, uh, Cork okay. Talk, uh, Dublin Airport. Uh, yes. Yeah. Okay. Oh. You've got yeah. all the best ones. Yeah. So, uh, 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 yeah, this is uh, my tips of my craziness. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I know what you mean. I know what you mean. Yes, um, I'm really, really crazy. <laughs> but, but there's great, great whiskeys coming from Bushmills at the moment, and more, more to come, which is good news. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. So you, you'll but get your tropical good. flavors. You like your tropical fruit flavors. Oh! Yeah. But how do you find this one? This one, you know, this is a very, very black, black Bushmills. Oh yes, yeah, I've seen that before. Yeah, yeah. yeah, I have never opened this one, but uh, I will try this one uh, in the future. Yeah, that's amazing. That's amazing. Yeah, I have never seen such kind of a black. No, not, not no, no, not a black bush. You know, just a black bush mills. <laughs> yeah, yeah. No, that's a beautiful bottle. Yeah, that's a great yeah, bottle. Yeah, yeah and I like that you're I like that you're opening all of these bottles because uh, they're made to be enjoyed, and you're enjoying them. Which is yeah. which is the good thing, yeah, yeah, and also probably this uh, these bottles will be uh, enjoyed at my drum club, yeah. Mm. 
Yeah, I, th this bottle is not for uh, not for me, just not for a member of the drum club. So I would like to produce and I would like to serve to the, all the members to the uh, uh, all my drum club. Save some for when I come over now to Japan and Rob please, and I will please, knock on your please, door. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I'm really, really welcome to you. Please tell me before you come. I will, I will. Um, how far away do you live from one another? Like, how long would it take to get from Fuki City to Tokyo? I takes me about... Rob, how long? Maybe, uh, maybe three hours, but uh, we're all linked up by... Uh, the Shinkansen, which Shinkansen is the Super train. Express, yeah, from, yeah. So, uh, the, bullet, the bullet train? About, yeah, the bullet train. We're about three hours away. Yeah, I think so. Okay. Or we could fly across in about uh, 45 minutes, but as I said, there's no uh, kind of regional airport here in Fukui where I am, so. Mm. Yeah, yeah, I think so. fastest will be about two hours. Mm. Rob, what, what's, what's Fukui known for as a city? Well, uh, we're known for dinosaurs. Mm. Uh, you know, really? It was the, the site of the first uh, prehistoric uh, kind of fossils in Japan. Okay. So uh, Fukui Station, if you were to arrive here by, by train, you'd be greeted with uh, a lot of kind of murals of uh, dinosaurs and T-Rexes and Fukuisauruses and whatnot. And we're host to uh, the third best dinosaur museum in the world. Wow. So up by the ski slopes, there's a, there's a big uh, dinosaur museum, which is in the shape of a giant egg. And uh, that uh, museum is, is pretty fantastic. And uh, it's all in Japanese, but it's all about the fossils which they found here uh, about 20 years ago. How many people live in Fukui City? Uh, the city itself is not so big, but the county hosts about one million uh, residents. So it, it would be a relatively minor city in Japan, but it's located right in the middle of Honshu, which is kind of the, the main island. So you got uh, Hokkaido in the north, Honshu in the middle, and Kyushu in the south. But Fukui is very well located because it's bang in the middle of the <laughs> chain of islands. Hopefully I got the marker right there. Good, good map. It bang on. <laughs> yeah, it's perfect, perfect. Yeah, perfect. That's yeah. Right. You have to come across. It looks so close on the map. Yeah. It looks, also, I mean, it looks like it's six inches, six inches away. Yeah, um, but Fukui City is bigger than Tokyo, isn't it? <laughs> Well, Tokyo's bigger uh, here. <laughs> <laughs> you know, people know Tokyo, but nobody knows Fukui. But uh, yes, if you're into dinosaurs, good. it's the place to be. But the Fukui is uh, good for uh, you know, tasting the fish, fish flavors. Yeah, good, good. Uh, they, the fishermen can get the good fish in the Fukui, Ishikawa, Toyama prefectures now. Yep, it's very true. I mean, Fukui is on the west coast, which is um, facing Korea. Mm. And the uh, fish from Fukui would be very much cold water. So yeah. um, it's it's famous for good sushi and mm. uh, good soba noodles, which is harvested uh, yeah. locally. And, um, you know, it's a grand little place. It's not exactly world famous but it's grand and if you want a real taste mm. of japan like it's not tokyo it's not osaka but it's rural and the people are nice and mm. it's legit you know so uh, it, it would be small town japan but a, a great spot mm. are there many western europeans living in that part of japan rob yeah, I mean, we have uh, French people and Italians and uh, whatnot, but the Westerner here where I am would be relatively exotic, which which might be hard for Irish people to grasp uh, in terms of us being exotic. Uh, isn't something we're accustomed to, but, uh, you know, uh, there's Europeans here, but at the same time, we're outsiders. Mm. So 
so so you'll catch a stare and you'll be you'll be pointed at on the regular but uh not not in a bad way you know people people are glad to have you and uh you know we add a bit of spice to to the mix rob are you you're working at something else other than whiskey on a full-time basis or does whiskey pay all the bills and put desi through through college um, whiskey wouldn't put Dresi through college, no, but uh, I, I'm full-time at the university here, so I'm uh, uh, kind of a tenured job at the local university, so um, my day-to-day -day would be teaching business English to young Japanese who are perhaps uh, taking engineering as their main subject or architecture. So I teach big business English to those lads uh, who might need it as they go forward, uh, kind of into kind of international jobs. Uh, okay. in and then uh, when the uh, when the college day is over, throw on the old, uh, the old paddy hat, jump in the van and start hawking whiskey around the streets of Fukui. Happy days. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I mean, uh, Hawking the whiskey would be kind of a hobby at this point, but something that I would like to get more involved in uh, going forward uh, with new up-and-coming Irish distilleries as they yeah. as they get going. To have somebody on the ground in Japan would be something that I'd like to step into as a role. Yeah. That would be amazing. Um, the, the love for Irish whiskey is just growing and growing around the world. Um, Tetsuro, a lot of people in our audience are... Um, very appreciative of you showing us your no, really. great bottles, and um, uh, you know, lots of people have bottles and they just show them to 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 show off, but not you. You show them because you love them, and you open mm. them, and you drink them, and your passion is very obvious and very evident, mm. and uh, and people are enjoying your passion for Irish whiskey. Yeah, thank you very much. Yeah, yeah, I'd like to yeah. I would like to share these kind of bottles to uh, every people to uh, who who I touch to, to touched. Yeah. This is this is this bottle is not for um, for not for me, not for uh, every people who rub uh, Irish whiskey, I think. And uh, so this uh, yeah, I would like to uh, mention about this one to Barry. Uh, Japanese market uh, is a very, very good how to say uh, treasure island because Irish whiskey is the the too much sorry. The Irish whiskey, the value of Irish whiskey is not so high in the in Japan now. So I can easily get the Irish whiskey. Well, for example, recently I got the uh, Middleton very rare, nineteen eighty seven. It's uh, not so high not so high price. Uh, also, the um, Bushmills uh, old vintage is not so high. So we can easily easily get to uh, such kind of Irish whiskeys but my mainland of Ireland and in, we cannot easily to get all of, the, all of that so uh, it's a good way and a good opportunity to get all of them to in in Japan so I now I have to almost uh, the old thing all things I have to do is to get all of uh, Irish whiskeys in Japan, then produce or serve uh, uh, such kind of whiskey to the lovers of Irish whiskey. I think. Yes. Uh, so yeah. I am run. I manage the uh, uh, Irish whiskey drum club now. But uh, now you uh, all mentioned uh, that we all Japanese doesn't have get the uh, uh, vaccine, so. So I cannot do the, any, how to say, um, my drum club uh, for uh, half a uh, half a year. So I'd like to do more uh, my drum club. Then I'd like to produce uh, more my Irish whiskey here. Yeah. Right, right. I, I think that after tonight, I know there are some representatives of Irish distilleries here in the audience tonight, and they're looking at you and your collection and your dram club and they'd like to maybe get their whiskies over to japan and and with rob and yourself i'm sure now that they know that there are great yeah, yeah, irish yeah. whiskey fans there maybe there's an opportunity yeah, to do so that yeah. and also 
uh, it's a great, uh, it's a, it's a great, great, uh, it's my great honor, uh, the Peronal Rical, the, the, the Middleton Distillery uh, uh, helped me, uh, the, not, not Middleton Distillery, Peronal Rical Japan helped me uh, and support me, uh, my uh, uh, jump club, and uh, I, uh, we, we produce uh, uh, together the uh, next I, my Irish Irish whiskey jam club. Uh, uh, the brand, brand manager comes to my jam club and do the seminar. So uh, I, I mean, I could uh, do the good relationship with uh, them. So, but uh, this is not uh, um, Middleton. I would like to do the Rambe, uh, yep. Quebecans, uh, also the Bushmills. I'd like to spread the, this kind of activity in, in Japan. Then I'd like to make uh, more Irish whiskey lovers, more and more. Yeah. Mm. You're a great ambassador for Irish whiskey already. Yeah, I hope and, I, uh, I, would, I would like to be that. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Maybe yeah. Um, maybe that's the job in the future. Um, but what would your wife say if you became an Irish whiskey ambassador? Would she be happy? Uh, probably she doesn't. Ha she doesn't. Be ha she is not happy <laughs> because uh, she she doesn't understand why my my husband have uh, uh, such kind of a collection in uh, his uh, small room. Yeah. <laughs> a, I think. Uh... I think, Barry, what Tetsuro is saying is that uh, we need to get uh, Irish whiskey into the mouths of consumers here. And uh, at the end of the day, I mean, getting it out there is what it's all about. And uh, being on the ground here in Japan is something that Tetsuro and myself can do. So uh, if possible, we want to hook in with the new distillers and, and get it going. We're ready to go. We're good to go. Well, you have everything you need. I, it's just a matter of connecting with them and um, happy to make any introductions I can for you and, and uh, point people in your direction. Uh, the Asian market, I know for for Irish whiskey companies is seen as a long-term investment strategy. Um, there's a stability in Asia um, that, you know, you've got the, 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 the challenges in the US right now with everything from tariffs and from COVID and the US market is not as predictable as it was historically. And a lot of brands are looking at Asia and seeing because of the diversity of economies and different paces of growth and amongst the different countries uh, across Asia, there's maybe an opportunity to, uh, to invest more in the Asian market, which can only be good for, for both of you as well. Yeah, I think so. Like uh, what I was getting going here, Barry, and, and initially when I contacted you, I was saying I wanted to get Irish whiskey fans of Japan going. Yeah. As, as you have Irish whiskey fans of America going. So I came up with a logo at least. Uh, I, I can't say I did much more thereafter, but uh, oh. perhaps people uh, could give us a like or, or follow us. And maybe it's something that Tetsuro could chime in on. And between us, we could get it going. So you on Facebook, you are? Uh, I've set up an Instagram. Instagram about okay. it, and uh, I made the first video, which kind of introduced myself in Japanese. But uh, I think perhaps myself and Tetsuro could uh, really get this going if we put our minds. Yeah, up. maybe we need to. Uh, we can twin our organizations together, like twin cities, the uh, the twin Facebook groups or twin online communities. Yeah, no Irish doubt whiskey fans, Japan. Um, give us the, uh, I can't find it on Instagram there, but uh, maybe if you give us the, uh, the, yeah. the handle, we'll put it up on the screen for you. Sure. I'll, uh, send it on. For us there. Yeah, do. Yeah. And we'll, we'll promote it. Um, and, uh, Anne Marie wants to know, do we have a logo? No, we don't even have a logo for Irish whiskey fans of America. We're kind of using the stories and sips logo a bit, the, the two glasses. Um, I am going to work on a logo though. Um, I have that in the, on my long list that keeps getting longer every day. Um, yeah, we can absolutely, uh, we, we should pair up and we'll do, uh, we'll do uh, transfers of, of, of whiskeys and people between both of our communities so that we can do uh, trips between America and Japan and Japan and America. How about that? Yeah, I mean, sure. Uh, what would be better? You know, we could have a bit of crack and a bit of a laugh and uh, pull the community together and uh, enjoy it. 
Stuart Quayle from Tipperary Distillery is in our audience. He just joined Tipperary Distillery. Stuart, get some Tipperary over there to Japan, will you? Get some Tipperary whiskey over to them, please. And uh, Hinch Distillery is in our audience too. Um, Jamie, get some Hinch whiskey over to Japan quick. They're thirsty. Yeah, I mean, Hinch and the likes, um, get them out. And um, what I'm doing at the moment is setting up a Tachinomia, which is a standing <laughs> bar down by the station here. I was telling Tetsuro during the week that uh, I'm setting up a small standing bar down by the station. Yeah. And that standing bar will be an Irish whiskey standing bar, which uh, will showcase the best of um, new and upcoming distilleries and 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 the uh, established ones. But mm. uh, putting it down by the station where people can knock in and knock out and uh take up a bit of culture and whiskey as they go towards the train is uh the way to go i reckon what would they do there rob uh the, the standing bar is kind of um it'd be a familiar european thing when it comes to coffee like in italy you, and spain you'll go and have your your tapas your coffee your espresso uh you're saying let's let's take that to the next level and have uh is it little shots of irish whiskey you'd have um, yeah, what I'm on about is that uh, the Japanese have a culture of standing bars and it's not a coffee standing bar. It's a bar where you stop in and there's a curtain behind your head. So nobody kind of sees you in there. And you go in for a beer or a whiskey or whatever you like. But um, the culture is already established in that uh Pull the curtain, you go in, and there's a counter. There's no stool or anything else. It's uh, a place where you stand, you have a quick drink, and then you jump on the next train. Perfect. So I would like to make a chain of standing bars which feature Irish whiskey at, uh, you know, established uh, Ecky. The Ecky is the station here. So I would like to see Irish whiskey bars as standing bars at Japanese stations dotted around the country. Amazing. Mm. I love it. I reckon that's the way forward. All right. We're gonna do a we'll we'll do a GoFundMe. We'll get we'll 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 get this going. <laughs> yeah. Well that's it's not impossible, you know. I think uh I put down the the pause on the first one there by Fukui Station a month ago. So I'm up to me knackers in uh, dust and uh, drilling and uh, all the rest. So uh, we get it going. You'll have to come back to us when you've got that up and running and we'll do a little tour and a little, we'll, we'll patch you in on one of the nights as well and do another uh, little, little tour of your standing Irish bar. That'd be brilliant. Mm. Yeah, sure. Let's go for it. You know, there's nothing holding yeah. us back. Park the van outside. So they can get another whiskey between the, the bar and the train. Maybe the van is halfway between the mm. bar and the train, you know, on the platform. Yeah, sure. It might be, but uh, we might need to build a barrier between the train and them um, because uh, you don't want them, uh, you know, rolling over. <laughs> so you ha we, ha we have to take a barrier to the night train to enjoy the high ball you know, from Fukui to the Tokyo station. Yeah. yeah I'm ready. Yeah, I'm ready. That's real. We've got our Shinkansen coming to Tokyo, uh, coming yeah. to Fukui soon, so we'll have a faster connection between. Yeah, yeah, Korea yeah, yeah. And Tokyo. When, 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 uh, for, when I'm, I'm not sure the when the uh, Shinkansen, the Super Express, uh, go through the uh, Tokyo to Fukui, probably two or three years later. Yeah, I think it's going to be three years to be honest, but uh, okay. we'll have a faster connection between Fukui and Tokyo. Yeah, I think so. Then we can we, we can each you know we can see the dialect way together. Oh, that sounds great. <laughs> Definitely. Tetsuro, there's there's a there's a comment here from somebody who knows you, Jim yep. Delise. He said oh, when he Jim, lived in Japan, hey. he would do sometimes do live performances. DJ Tokyo, <laughs> twenty years ago, my Japanese yeah, yeah, brother. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. He is my, he's my brother. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, he's living in New, probably New Jersey now. Is that right? Wow. Yeah, I, I, I work as a DJ in the 20 years before. And then he's uh, my uh, MC. Uh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, when I, I, I told her yesterday, uh, I, uh, I, uh, I, perform, I, I told, I chucked uh, uh, in this uh, you know, stories and the chips. 
Then yeah. he is uh he will see he will watch this one. Yeah. <laughs> That's great. <laughs> <laughs> Amazing. Thank you. Amazing. Thank you, Jim. Yeah. <laughs> Dahi wants to know, is there a whiskey trolley on the bullet train? Yeah. yeah, yeah. Oh. Well, well, there actually is, you know. The trolley comes up and down, and usually it's beers, but they have short uh, whiskey shots as well and highballs. Mm. In so how long but, do we need uh, if, if, we, if we come out to Japan? How long do we need? A month? Two months? I mean, it depends what you want to do, Barry. Like, uh, if you're on for distillery tours and whatnot, I mean, you might need a month. But um, the Japan experience has no limits, you know. The, the, the food, culture, the yeah, uh, everything else. I mean, there's no limit to the, the depth to which you could go. I mean, I, I was recently reading a book by... Uh, Dave Broom, the Scottish whiskey writer, who recently published a book there, uh, um, The Whiskey Way, and it's all about Japan and their whiskey culture. But there's there's no limits to the depth to which you could go in terms of Japan and the experience. Well, whenever the world opens up again, hopefully soon, we're now double vaccinated as of today so as soon as japan allows double vaccinated people back in and it's safe to mm. travel we'd love to come and support japan and fly the flag for irish whiskey for a little bit as well mm. we'd uh, we'd love to have you barry and uh, we'd show you a very very good time i i have no doubt i have no doubt about it is there is there one more whiskey we want to have before we go is there one more in us what do you think I finished this bottle. The, the, the dream cask is gone. Should I I'll find something else? Oh. <laughs> I, I think that call is Tetsuros. Yeah. Wait a second. Uh, what about... Uh, which is better? <laughs> I have a menu. Irish whiskeys now. <laughs> now a Corona Kilty. That's a good one, yeah. Yeah, Tillings. And I have just opened... the. Uh, Friends of Middleton. Friends of Middleton. We are I mean, that's that. You know, there's people in Middleton that can't get that bottle, and you have it that's in Japan. Right. Yeah. And um, for example, yeah, we can easily to uh, Middleton distillery the bottles. We, we can easily get get yeah. Oh, this one should it's a nice bottle for me. Mm. And before that, uh, Rob, I would like. Can I go to the bathroom now? <laughs> Toilet. I would like to, to drink. Take a break. Take a break. <laughs> Take a break. <laughs> Take a break. Yeah. What are the ones that you sent me, Tetsuro? What's that? Wait a second. And uh, the Kronkyoti. Kronkyoti. Cognac cask, this one. Sorry, do you have that Kronkyoti cognac cask there? Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, yeah. I don't have the cognac cask, but um, oh, really? I'll, find so I'll find something else from Cork. I'll find something else. What? So, give me a second. And uh, to you, you have, uh, Rob, um, Barry, you have any uh, current QT cask now? No bottles? Yeah, I do, yeah. I've got, um, I have a few. Here's one you probably don't have. This is uh, a... Pod cask. Uh, no, no, no pod cask, yeah. Uh, this is an old, it's right. a collaboration with uh, some brewery, one. Huh? With the with the rugby club in DC, uh, the, the captain's bottle. I, 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 I have the only uh, this one. Yeah, the port cask, is it? Yeah, podcast. Oh, uh, got that one there. Yeah, uh, the podcast. Oh, the, rem the limited edition for the uh, the uh, the distillery. Oh yeah, yeah. But uh, it's a fifteen. Well, you you pour whatever you like. Here's what I, I found mine. Well, about fifteen of those. Here's what I'm gonna pour. What's that? Huh? Oh. Yeah. oh. <laughs> <laughs> you one. can't catch him out. Yeah, that's the one. Uh, yeah, yeah. Well, it's enjoy time, isn't it? <laughs> if if you need to take a bathroom break, that's okay too. Uh, sorry, I, I'm gonna. Sorry. All right, <laughs> come back to us. <laughs> okay, listen. Uh, Tetsuro's gone off to the jacks, but uh, Barry, you can only say fair play to him and uh, uh, and whatnot. Like, uh, it's unreal. Enthusiast uh, doesn't do him credit. 
It's unbelievable. I mean, I don't think there's a whiskey we could find that Tetsura doesn't have or hasn't tried, and that he's surprised me with some that I've never even heard of. Um, yeah. Which is amazing. It's it's unbelievable, isn't it? Yeah. I mean, uh, he, he's really great, and uh, he, he, he's dug in deep there. Like, he, he, he's not just showing off. He's, he's thoroughly into it. He really is. You know, he really is. Um, I think he's fully engaged and would be a great man to hook in for uh, up-and-coming distilleries uh, as an influencer. Well, the two uh, of you would be. No. The two of you. Um, I mean, together, you, I think the, the Irishman and the Japanese man and the love of whiskey amongst the two of you is just incredible. And any distillery would be happy to have ye on the ground and with your local knowledge and your passion and your, your skills. Um, yeah. They'd be foolish not to. Yeah, I agree. I think that between us, we could offer something special and uh, get it going seriously on the ground because the big thing is getting it into people's mouths. You know, we can talk about whatever and whatnot, but you'll see fellas roaming up and down the aisles in these uh, vast uh, I, uh, um, off licenses here where you wouldn't know one label from another but I know. until you get into somebody's mouth uh it's not really valid so uh, i think myself and tetsuro can do it and, you can do it uh, we can yeah. uh, get it going and promote uh, the good stuff um tipperary distillery is going to get some tipperary whiskey to japan look he'll have some tipperary over there soon yeah, Tipperary whiskey. I'm I'm really work, focused about that. About that. I I don't have uh, get any uh, uh, bottles from uh, some shops. I'd like to know uh, what kind of taste or what kind of flavors they produce. Yeah, yeah. Because, gonna because, help you out. Yeah, because uh, I uh, two two years before I went to Tipperary uh, County County Tip not not I'm not sure County Tipperary. Uh, yeah, rock, rock of Kashe or uh, yeah, yeah, of course, yeah, yeah, the the home hometown of a cork, yeah, two years before. Oh, really? Yeah, yeah. So I and also my friend living in near near my house, uh, was the work at uh, Tipperary. So Tipperary, really? the sound of Tipperary is very close to me, and so <laughs> I'd like to know about everything about that. Well, we have lots of Tipperary people in our audience, including Mr. Kieran Quinn, who really? is a, 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 a large man in height from Tipperary, and uh, he um, knows everyone in Tipperary, and um, I'd, I'd imagine he knows people that you met in Tipperary. Mm. <laughs> he says you're his adopted brother. <laughs> <laughs> oh, no, thank you very much, Mr. K K K Kieran Quinn. Kieran, yeah, Kieran Quinn, much. yeah. I, I want yeah, to ask I'm, you about uh, Tetsuro. I want to ask you about your journeys to Ireland, your your travels to Ireland. And um, before I do that, um, yeah. Tony wants to know what I'm drinking now. Um, Tony, I've moved on to this Redbreast ten year old, mm. just just the the most recent release from Redbreast uh, in the last two months. Uh, I'm sipping on that, and yeah, um, good, good cask, yeah. Tetsuro, yeah. when did you first go to Ireland? Two years before, nine, 2019, this is the first trip to the island now, yeah. And, uh, yeah, but I don't I don't tell you uh, my uh, second business. Uh, I have uh, uh, some business now. One is uh, my my main business is for uh, web creation, web in integration business. This is my main business. But the second one is, uh, uh, could you see this one? Yeah, shells. Is, yeah, oyster. Oysters. Yeah. I'm a, I'm a shaka now. You're an oyster shucker. Yeah, hey, oyster shucker now. The, the reason why I uh, I went to the uh, island is to learn how to open the oyster <laughs> in the Galway. In Galway, yeah, the oyster yeah, festival. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oyster <laughs> festival, you know. Yeah. So I I work for uh, Shaka in in Japan uh, for uh, over five or six years now. Yeah. But yeah, and um, many people go to the uh, championship for uh, uh, okay, uh, oyster openings uh, festivals, but uh, many Japanese uh, people <laughs> cannot win that such a, such kind of championships. 
So I would like to know why uh, they cannot win. It's a reason. Uh, it's so I would like to go to uh, Ireland yeah, two years before. <laughs> and uh, also, uh, Ireland is uh, my interest at, at the time, uh, the interest for my whiskey. So I have uh, two interests. One is the whiskey, one is the oyster. <laughs> <laughs> then Galway is a good place to see uh, watch all of the uh, element of that my interest. Uh, I mean, Tetsura, people think you should be president with your uh, <laughs> with your interests. I mean, I, I love that you you wanted to figure out how to shock an oyster, so you didn't go to YouTube. You went to Galway. I think that was a. <laughs> I mean, that's yeah. amazing. <laughs> yeah, so I went. Yeah, I, at that time I went to the uh, Moran's Oyster Cottage in the not, not south side of a Galway. And, uh, Moran's uh, on the weir. Yeah, yeah. Moran's on the weir. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> and uh, I learned from the how to open the uh, European oyster from the, my friend uh, Mr. Small. Yeah. yeah, it's a good, very, I, probably I think the best experience in the uh, Europe. Yeah. I, I, <laughs> I think we just need to have a round of applause for Tetsuo. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you very much. That's amazing. Yeah. I mean, this is amazing. Yeah. <laughs> and, 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 and this one is uh, oyster yeah. from Akishi, yeah. near <laughs> the Akishi distillery. Uh, we have another man from Tipperary who has decided that you are now an honorary Tipperary man. So you have been, Thank you very much. Thank you very much. Yeah. I think they're going to organize a passport for you. I think I have to go back to the Tipperary as the honorary Tipperary man. Kieran said he's going to send you a Tipperary jersey for my uh, Gaelic football. Thank you very much. Yeah. Oh my! Uh, it's this a is great amazing. honor. You know, yeah. we've had people from Ireland on the show that are less Irish than you are. You know, you have done more <laughs> Irish experiences than many Irish yeah. we've had on the show already. Yeah, I'd like to be Irish, yeah. <laughs> why, why I don't live in uh, Japan? I should be, I, I would like to born <laughs> in <laughs> Ireland. <yeah. laughs> mm. Richard says, uh, his passion puts us all to shame. What a guy. What a guy. <laughs> Sorry, Tetsuro, I'm really, really crazy. <laughs> you the man. You the man. Yeah, yeah, Chris, thank you. Man. I got all that. Mr. Paul, thank you. Best luck in yes, says Christy. <laughs> best luck in thank yes. You, I agree. I yeah. agree. Um, this is amazing. Um, yeah. Tetsuro, you mentioned that you're waiting until your daughter gets married to open your dream cask, 32-year-old. How many yeah. daughters do you have? How many daughters have you got? Just uh, one? Uh, how many? Uh, just the one. One daughter, okay. Yeah, but you have two, I have a two, you have two dream casks. How many dream casks have you got? Uh, one, I just two now. Two dream casks and one daughter. So when are yeah. you going to open the other one? <laughs> 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 so all you have to do is just open the one uh, 32 years old now? <laughs> <laughs> no, don't open it now. <laughs> <laughs> I'm really worried about it. But yeah, it's actually, I don't to now worry about um, how, when I should I open this uh, 30, uh, 32 years old of um, uh, Red West 22 years old? Because one is, of course, you told me before, uh, the bottles, one, one bottle is for my daughter, but uh, the one uh, is, uh, uh, should uh, I should do, do. probably uh, this is uh, my 20, 10 years or uh, five years ceremony on my uh a drum club of uh, Irish whiskey enthusiasts. This is my, uh, I started the year, last year, so probably I opened it at 2024 or 25. Yeah, it's a probably, I will open. I'll uh, be there, I'll be there. Leave a, leave a seat for me, I'll be there. Yeah. Yeah. Please, please come to Japan. <laughs> I'll come then too, yeah. yeah. <laughs> or, or I will send you the, some samples or small bottles, yeah. <laughs> Pretty enjoy together and on the such kind this kind this kind of online uh, stream. That's right. Yeah. Brian Brian says that you have to come back on the show during the reception of your daughter's wedding. <laughs> <laughs> uh, 
<laughs> well, before that, please, uh, please marry with my daughter. <laughs> <laughs> if, if you marry Tetsura's daughter, you get a free Dreamcast. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. So, yeah, I am, I am, I am, I'm claim to the older people. If I got married with my daughter, you can get uh, this uh, red breast 32 years old, yeah? <laughs> <laughs> so please, please get married with my daughter. <laughs> is your daughter ready to get married or is she? Yeah, 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 yeah. She's ready, is she? Okay, all right. Yeah, <laughs> I, yeah I'm not sure. The, the, uh, the man who married with my daughter, uh, 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 is aiming to uh, uh, for whiskey for <laughs> married. I'm not sure. Well, that's the problem now. If you offer up a dream cask, you don't know if he loves your daughter or loves the whiskey more. You don't know. Uh, I don't know. It depends on him. <laughs> 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 I, uh, it it, uh, it depends on her uh, because uh, my daughter have uh, some uh, exact uh, eyes or exact have uh, a beautiful point to some how say. Uh, to have a good um, view uh, to see uh, what <laughs> such kind uh, what the people is uh, what he is so i'm not sure such kind of but uh, i'm really uh, worried about uh, the man who worry uh, uh, who marry with my daughter have a good viewpoint to the uh, Irish whiskey yeah yes yes yeah that's a good point. <laughs> yeah, if he had, doesn't have not not any knowledge uh, for Irish whiskey, I have to train to him. Okay, you, so yeah. the training comes free. You get free training, free Irish yeah, yeah, whiskey yeah, yeah. training. Well, of course, free. Of course, free. Free. Drinking. Jason. Jason asks, can she wait until he gets divorced? <laughs> so. <laughs> 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 uh, well, you don't let, let's not give away your daughter tonight. You can let, let, her, let her make her own decision. <laughs> your, your wife's not going to be very happy if at the end of today you've, you've spent your whole day in the room drinking whiskey and you've also married off your daughter. You're going to be in big trouble. <laughs> But now, uh, my, my, my wife is now laughing at the next door, yeah. <laughs> Dave says his son wants to move to Japan. We need to introduce them. There you go. Uh, please, please, please. Please, please. Please come to Japan. <laughs> we are waiting, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh, wow. I, I tell you, I, we haven't had a lock-in like this in quite a while. This, is, um, yeah. this has taken many twists and turns in the best way. This has been, yeah. this is amazing. In your time. <laughs> yeah. I think uh, all, uh, all credit to Tetsuro there. You know, like uh, it's easy to uh, float your boat as an Irish person. Uh, you know, talking about Irish whiskey as an Irishman is very easy. But what Tetsuro is doing is, is special because, you know, he's, He's obviously not Irish, but he's got a massive enthusiasm, so he has to be given credit for that. Absolutely, absolutely. Um, amazing passion, Tetsura, amazing love for Ireland and Irish whiskey. And um, as we say in Ireland, you're great crack, uh, you're great fun. And um, we, we could enjoy many a drink together late at night in a pub. Uh, and we know we'd laugh a lot and uh, and and sip on whiskey and uh, and maybe find a husband for your daughter at the same time. Um, <laughs> so there's lots lots of fun ahead, I'm sure. And we have to have drinks in person. Like it's, we might be separated by the Pacific Ocean at the moment, but we don't always have to be. Um, mm. And uh, hopefully, we get to raise a glass together in the future. You know? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Of course. Totally, Barry. I mean, uh, you're, uh, yeah. You're five thousand miles away from Ireland, but we are actually ten thousand miles away from Ireland here in Japan. So we have to do our best, and it might be difficult, but it's not impossible. So we want to do our best to uh, showcase uh, what we've got, and uh, you know, put it out there. Absolutely, absolutely. Yeah, yeah, um, yeah ten yeah ten thousand miles in the probably uh, directly located, but. Uh, just a two thousand two seconds in the Google map, yeah. 
Yeah, yeah. That's right. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, we got, you get, we're really, really close, yeah. And five <laughs> yeah. seconds in the bullet train. Yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> so we, we, we don't have any, I know, the rest, we have no, I'll say, uh, not no limits. No. Yeah, no, yeah. No limits. Well, yeah. I tell you, t tonight has been special for a number of reasons. It's the music was amazing. Um, yeah. Kilbegans gave us such great music tonight, which we're very thankful for. We thank Kilbegans for, for joining us tonight. Um, it reminded us of home, it reminded us of the pubs in Ireland. And Tetsuro, you showed us, you reminded us of the passion for Ireland that exists outside of Ireland. And I think you brought us all a bit closer um, together much. tonight. And, and Rob, you are so kind to bring us into your van, cramped and all as it is to have all of us in there with you. Uh, you brought us in and welcomed us and showed us your passion as well. And between the standing pubs, the van, Tetsura's Dram Club, and the bullet train, I'd say we could have some crack in Japan together um, as soon as is humanly possible. Um, but this has been a great lock and I've had so much fun tonight. This has been yeah, amazing. It's a great experience. Uh, thank you very much, Rob and Barry. It's very, very yeah. nice morning, yeah. <laughs> I, yeah, I can good sleep from now. <laughs> you can go to sleep now. You're, you're yeah, free yeah, to go yeah. to bed now. Yeah. Uh, and tell tell no your problem. wife thank you. Thank you very much for allowing you to to join us this morning. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Indeed. Uh, thanks to Tetsuro. You know, I didn't have to twist his arm or anything. So uh, fair fair play to Tetsuro. Thank yeah, you, thank Tetsuro. You very much, you know. And and thanks Tom and Kill Beggins because. Uh, these yeah, people are what, see make all it, them, yeah. what makes it great, you know, a passion for Ireland and a passion for Irish whiskey, and uh, you know, let's get it going. So, uh, fair balls. Um, Rob, the, what's the website? Remind us of your website for uh, the for the the van. Yeah, the van is um, Shelburne. What, what's it? What's it? What's it? Uh, Irish Bar Shelburne. Oh, wait now, shelburne.jp, is it? Yep. No, um, shelburne.jp. If you want to send me a message, it's uh, info at shelburne.jp and www.shelburne.jp. And you can find us at Irish Bar Shelburne on Instagram or whatever else. And uh, we're good to go. We're ready to represent Irish whiskey here in Japan. And we'll do our best at events, uh, corporate events, uh, whatever is going uh, we're good to go, and uh, let's get it going. Tetsura, does your Dram Club have a website, or is there any social media you'd uh, like to send people to? Uh, no, I don't have that, but if you have uh, some interest uh, in for my Dram Club, please tell me uh, through the, how to say, um, oh, Barry, uh, could you could you list my, uh, some web, uh, say my uh, Dram Club website in the, this uh, uh uh, archive of this uh, movies, no? Yep, yep. I could, okay, I so I'll tell you later. Okay, perfect. Uh, and yeah. I'll share it with our with our community as well. Yeah, uh, perfect. Um, everybody had a great night tonight in the audience. Thank you, Barry, Rob, Tetzer, and the Kilbegans for a splendid evening. Says Paul. Uh, Kieran and Tipperary says, "What a brilliant lock in dynamite." Um, MP says, "Thanks all. A great night slash day." Uh, let me see what else. Rebecca says, "Wonderful evening." Stuart Quayle from Tipperary Distillery. Great night, lads. Um, Tony Nicoletti thinks this is the best ever. Um, <laughs> and, uh, <laughs> yes. Um, Dahi says, best ever uh, episode of Stories and Sips. Really enjoy the crack. Uh, Rob is holding up there, uh, flagrantly abusing his time on the air to promote uh, Irish whiskey fans of Japan, which we fully encourage. So go to Instagram. Is it? Did you, did you find the uh, Instagram handle? Yeah, Instagram. I mean, I'm just getting it going, Barry, and I'm following right. on to we'll your lead. So, uh, Irish whiskey fans, Japan, we'll get going. It'll be all Perfect. in Japanese language, but uh, we'll do our best. We'll uh, we'll share that in our community, and also thanks to Tom O'Neill from the Blarney Stone, who uh, shared with us his passion for Ireland and Irish whiskey and the pub culture. And uh, I see an in-person lock-in in the future together, where we're all hanging out in the same place. Um, maybe not at eight o'clock in the morning, but maybe a little bit later uh, in Japan together, and um, that'll be a that'll be a great day when we can do that. 
I hope so, um, Barry. Yeah. And uh, cheers for having us on. I mean, we're delighted to be included here. I mean, we're miles away, but uh, cheers. Cheers and slaughter. Yes. Kampai. Kampai is a good reason to drink from uh, morning. <laughs> It was a great reason. It was a great reason. And thank yeah. you both. Thank you so much. Thank uh, you very much, us. Barry and Rob. Thank you very much. It was good, good, good experience from that, from me. And we'll see you Cheers, again. Uh, see you again, definitely. Thanks so much, Rob. Thanks, Hetzer. Thank you, Rob. Amazing. Absolutely amazing. What a, what a night. What a lock-in. One of the best. One That'll go down in history. Uh, one of the best times we've had in a long, long time. And just such passion, such enthusiasm, such characters um, from the music, from the uh, the pubs to the whiskey drinking. And uh, I had no idea what kind of whiskeys Tetsura had on his shelf. But as soon as we went live and he started pulling out dream casks and 24-year-old tealings and 27-year-old malt barns we realized we we're in for a bit of crack we we're in for a good time and uh, what a great night uh, tough to top that one it's going to be very tough to top that one but we're going to try and we're going to try and top it because uh well that's what we're always trying to do isn't it we're trying to bring more fun more crack more community together but uh it'll take some some effort to top that but next week i already know what next week's show is going to be and i hope you'll join me next week as well on the lock-in next friday we're going to be joined by Mark Gillespie from Whiskey Cast, the longest running podcast uh, related to whiskey in the world, the longest running whiskey podcast. Many of you know Whiskey Cast. Mark Gillespie is a legend in the world of whiskey broadcasting. And myself and Mark are going to sit and chat for a couple of hours about the world of Irish whiskey. Mark was involved in the world of Irish whiskey long before most of us were. Uh, and had been traveling to Ireland in the 1990s and early 2000s, investigating and exploring Irish whiskey distilleries. So we're going to have a great night with uh, with Mark next week um, on the 14th, isn't it? Yeah, Friday the 14th of May. We're going to have a great night with Mark Gillespie. So um, let me see. Dave says, we'll see you Tuesday first. Will you? What's on Tuesday? I lose track of all the things that I've got to do. Um Next Tuesday, what's happening next, Jay? Uh, no, you're that. Uh, is that for the, the cask program, uh, Dave? That's on the twenty fifth of May. So that's um, all the way into the twenty fifth. Um, we've got lots of things coming up. I'm planning lots of more events, um, and as soon as Ireland opens up, I'm planning things in Ireland as well. Yes, cask purchasing, Dave. That's the May. That's May twenty fifth. May twenty fifth. So I gave you actually uh, two weeks, three weeks almost of head start or notice on that one. Um, that's May 25th. So if you're interested in purchasing a cask of whiskey in Ireland, if you're interested in learning about cask programs, I'm putting together an independent overview and, and an introduction to Irish whiskey cask programs. That's on Tuesday, May 25th, at uh, the same time as this, uh, 4 p.m. Pacific, 12 midnight Cork time, 8 a.m. Tokyo time. That'll be on Tuesday, May 25th. We'll be doing a cask purchasing introduction. I'm going to answer your questions about cask purchasing. I'm going to help you understand all of the aspects that you could consider for cost um, and duration and um, what you're getting yourself in for if you wanted to buy a cask of whiskey as an individual or as part of a group. So that's coming up on Tuesday, May 25th. So next week, Whiskey Cast, Mark Gillespie is joining us for our lock-in. And what else? Uh, do, 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 do. We've got lots coming up. I've got three great programs for our Irish whiskey fans of Ohio, our Ohio group coming up, and I'll invite you all to join us. We're going to be sharing the history of Bow Street Distillery uh, coming up. That's on, let me look at my calendar. We've got so many things coming up, it's hard to keep up with it. May, do, 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 do. let me see, Thursday, May 13th, we're going to be sharing the Bow Street story, the history of the Jameson Distillery. In Dublin, and we're going to be sipping on three whiskies related to the Bow Street Distillery in Dublin. Uh, that's the Bow Street story on Thursday, May 13th. What else have I got coming up? Thursday, May 20th, we're going to explore coopering and wood and what goes into making barrels. That's on May 20th. And then on May 26th, we're going to do a night exploring the Masters of Middleton. Barry Crockett, Kevin O'Gorman, and Brian Nation, the three master distillers of my lifetime. We're going to explore three whiskies that they've influenced. I can tell you already what they are. Can I? Oh, yes. Uh, 
Middleton Very Rare Barry Crockett Legacy and Middleton Very Rare 2019 and 2020. We'll be sipping on those whiskies that night. I'll, I'll put all of those details into the Irish Whiskey Fans of America Facebook group. If you're not part of that group, please, please, please join up. Why? Because it's where we post everything. Everything goes in there. Um, and also, if you're not already signed up to our email list, where we share all of these on a weekly basis, go to storiesandsips.com, storiesandsips.com. And on storiesandsips.com, you will find um, an email opt-in box. You can drop your name and your email list in there. We send out our Stories and Sips newsletter every Wednesday with details of upcoming events. And uh, we may have some things to share in the next few weeks too about more whiskey. We may have, we may have. I can say no more, I can say no more, but I can tell you something. You wanna stay tuned, you wanna you, you want to pay attention to what we're trying to do with the world in the world of whiskey. Uh, MP says, Brian Nation is his neighbor now. Well, if you stay tuned, MP, you might see Brian Nation joining us soon. So stay tuned, stay tuned. Um, yes, Dave, uh, Dave asks, will I be doing any fundraisers for my bike ride? I will, because my bike arrived on what day is today? Friday. My bike arrived on Wednesday. It's, I can look at it. I'm seeing it here now in a box. My bike is sitting there in a box. So I'm going to be getting out my bike out of that box tomorrow, um, as long as the vaccine hasn't knocked me out. And I'm going to start my training for um, my fundraiser for Pelotonia to raise money for cancer research. I'm going to be doing my, my training starting uh, tomorrow. So I'll be hosting some events, uh, most likely in June and July, virtual events uh, to raise money for cancer research. We're also trying to pull off something unbelievably special in the state of Ohio in August. And all I can say is that the first week of August, you might want to put a hold in your calendars because we're trying to do something that has never been done in the world of Irish whiskey before. And I have no more details to share on it right now because we're trying, we have a few moving pieces that we have to align and things we have to get over the line and things we have to clear with certain people. But if you're a fan of Irish whiskey, and I mean a serious fan of Irish whiskey, we're going to try and do something that has never been done. And we're going to do it in the state of Ohio. We're going to do it in Columbus. And we're going to do it in the first week of August, if we can get all the pieces to align. I'll have more details on it. It's going to be something very exclusive, very special, and only a few people are going to be able to be part of it. But we're going to open it up and give you a chance to be part of it. Um, something that I think is going to get people talking uh, in the world of Irish whiskey all over the world. It's never been done. And I have no more to say on it, and I'm sorry that I can't, but um, we are doing something very special uh, in Ohio in August, if we can, if we can. <laughs> you can't see me, sorry. I put my, uh, I put that, uh, bar the banner up there, you couldn't see me. Uh, so yes, what else? Um, let me look. Donna says, Barry with the jam-packed lineup. I am indeed, and Donna's gonna have to come on and share with us her whiskey. Lost Irish whiskey as well. As soon as the time's right, Donna, send a bottle our way and we'll get that up there as well. And that's it. Um, yes, yeah, so we got lots going on in May and June. Uh, we are aiming for uh, one of our first ever returns to normality in-person get-togethers as well, which I haven't brought up uh, in Ohio, in Columbus in June. We'll have more details on that in the next week or two. But we're going to try and do an in-person get-together in in, uh, in Ohio in June. Uh, once the world opens up even more and it's safe for us to travel, we'll do more of those in San Diego, in San Francisco, and a few other places, and in Ireland when the time is right as well. That will be the goal there. Greg says his passport is current. You better believe they're going to try and do things in Ireland once Ireland's ready to have us and it's safe for us to bring ourselves there, our vaccinated selves there. So yeah, so that's it. Uh, we have, uh, yeah, three hours and seven minutes of a lock-in. Who knew we would go so long? I think we all did. Shine, that's it. Michael says Brooklyn is ready for us. Oh, we'll have to do something in New York, no doubt about it. And Kieran Quinn and Dermot O'Malley up there in New Jersey and I uh, want to do something as well. So maybe uh, between Brooklyn and New Jersey, where's halfway for the two of you? The dead rabbit, I'd say. The dead rabbit, halfway between New Jersey and Brooklyn. 
Depends where in Brooklyn you are, I suppose. Shin A. Um, that's it, folks. Um, we had great music. Thanks to Kilbegans and thanks to Rob and Tetsuro and Tom. Back next week. Should we have one one verse of the Out Triangle? Just one verse. One verse. Why not? Why not? Mrs. Stories and Sips is like, oh yeah. One verse, is it? Maybe two, like. All right. One verse, two verses of the Owl Triangle, and that's it. Then I'm out of here. I the vaccine is kicking in now, and I'm gonna be leaning sideways singing. Let me uh let me oil the pipes with my red breast ten year old. Oh yeah. The pipes are oiled. A simple owl song, says Dearman. Here we go. A hungry feeling came o'er me stealing, and the pice were squealing in my prison cell, and the old triangle went jingle jangle all along the banks of the Royal Canal to begin the morning. The screw was ballin', get up ya bowsy and clean up your cell. And the old triangle went jingle jangle all along the banks of the Royal Canal. I wish to Jesus they'd raise my wages from 13 shillings up to two pounds ten and the old triangle went jingle jangle all along the banks of the royal canal last verse up in the female prison you there are 75 women Tis among those women I wish I did dwell. Controversial. And the old triangle went jingle jangle all along the banks of the Royal Canal. And that old triangle went jingle jangle all along the banks of the Royal Canal. All along the banks of the Royal Canal. You, Slodger. Good night. Thanks, everybody, for joining. We appreciate you. Phew. I'm going to grab my dinner. Good luck. <laughs>